You're watching Conference USA Football on ESPN+. Plus. We welcome you to Military City, USA, San Antonio, Texas, where UTSA Roadrunners return home to the Dome to welcome WKU and the Hilltoppers, a rematch of last year's Conference USA championship game. Moments away from opening kick. Lincoln Rose, LaDaron McLean with you and LD. They met twice last year, including that title clash right here inside the Dome. Third meeting in 12 months, two teams so familiar with one another, it's going to be hard to pull out any surprises, but we expect a lot of points on the board. You, you know, it's just something about when these two teams play one another, the fireworks just simply jump off the pace. And folks at home, you're going to be treated to two of the most prolific offenses in college football. And if you look at how things get done, they get it done with both of their quarterbacks. So lock in for this one for sure tonight. For the Roadrunners, that is Frank Harris, who continues to find records. He doesn't already own that zero on his chest. Eventually, will stand for how many records do not belong to Frank. He's simply been sensational. I mean, this kid can do everything with the football. We can see him run. We know he can pass. He set a school record last week against Middle Tennessee, 414 yards in that contest. He's got the receivers. He continues to put this offense in positions where you never can count these guys out. And oh, by the way, he's one of the ultimate leaders on the football field for sure. He's one of two quarterbacks today in this ball game who are in the top four in the nation in total offense. The other one, Austin Reed for Western Kentucky. WKU's quarterback is filling the shoes, oh, by the way, of the man who's starting for the New England Patriots these days, Bailey Zappi. Hey, look, th this kid can absolutely spin the football. He's got four receivers. You never know where he's going to go. And full command of this offense, he's throwing for 333 yards per game. He's got the physical tools, 6'2", 230 pounds. And make no mistake about it, he is owning this offense. And the Hilltoppers are ready to go high and fly again for this season. Roadrunners and Hilltoppers, round three. And that scoreboard operator better have some hazard pain. <laughs> well, you are right about that. These offenses like to get up and down the field, and these defenses have got to be on their best game here tonight. The kick from Narvison will go out of bounds, a rare mistake, and that will set up the offense for UTSA. So Frank Harris is back a lot, along with a lot of starters who have been, frankly, starters for all three years that Jeff Trailer's been around. Bounds on the kicking team. By rule, the ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. Patrick Foy, our referee today. Of course, the Roadrunners did lose Sincere McCormick. He is with the Raiders these days. Both these teams are proven to be pipelines to the NFL on Sundays. So these days, it is the veteran Brendan Brady in the backfield with Harris. Brady will get the opening carry behind those veteran linemen. When we talk about this offensive line for UTSA, the guards and center are by now are household names here in the 2-1-0. <laughs> but with four injured tackles trying to protect Frank Harris, his head coach, Jeff Trailer, offensive coordinator Will Stein, are mindful they may need a few more short passes to help protect those tackles. Yeah, you may see some of that today. But, you know, when we talked to Coach, obviously, Coach Trailer, he said we need to run the ball better. Hopefully they can get going with that. Harris threads the needle. His first completion as he finds Joshua Cephas. Well, I think that's a little bit of what we're talking about, his ability to get rid of the ball with pressure, find one of his targets underneath. Well, those Cephas at Western Kentucky last year who had a touchdown pass. As well as Frank Harris has played this year. Heck, he's only the fourth highest rated passer on his own team because of <laughs> some of his teammates getting in on some trick plays. Yeah, you got the standards continue to go here uh, for UTSA. This is a much better defense than perhaps a lot of casual observers might observe for WKU as they have the respect of Jeff Trailer and UTSA. Look, if your offense as, is as prolific as these two teams, your defense, sometimes the numbers won't be pretty. Harris avoids the big hit, but he is ultimately dragged down, stopped short of a first down by Jawan Jones, making his 52nd start for the Hilltoppers, and his career already has his master's in special education, two-time academic All-American, as they try to stop him here on third and two. Brady picks his hole and finds it. The drive continues for the Roadrunners. 
And you see them go with a little bit of tempo there. And, and you're right, this defense of the Hilltoppers is one of the better groups to come through in a long time. They're second in Conference USA and allowing points scored at 22.2. But they get after you in run defense, and it's going to be a challenge, especially if the road runners want to come out here and run the football against a tough defense that's only allowing 113 yards per game so far. Both of these teams, 1-0 and oh in conference. One of them will improve to 2-0. and oh. Harris has to be brought down after a four-yard gain. Frank Harris, a redshirt senior who still has another year of eligibility if your Conference USA preseason offensive player of the year chooses to return to San Antonio for another campaign. Second and six here as the Roadrunners continue to march. Dumps it down to Brady, has the blocks. And Brandon Brady has a first down and then some down at the 26-yard line. Yeah, this is the evolution of this offense, Lincoln. It's just so much to defend as we've got a hilltop down on the turf. Injury. You've got them thinking one way. You can run the screen out the back door with Brendan Brady. And this offensive line, they are big, they are fast, but they are agile, and they get out in front of that screen there. Brendan Brady, who thought he had retired from college football, already had a job lined up with some former football alumni from UTSA. And, well, when Sincere McCormick decided to go pro and there's a chance to run behind this talented offensive line, maybe add to your career totals, <laughs> said, why not? Yeah, I think a good decision, too. As a hilltopper is slow to get up, we will step aside in San Antonio. Roadrunners marching on their opening drive here in the Alamo Dome. Back underway, it is first and 10 for Frank Harris out of the pistol. Harris will keep it. Harris has space. Frank Harris with a nine yard gain, and that's gonna open up this playbook for your new offensive coordinator this year. As Will Stein got promoted to co-OC, this is after, remember UTSA last year, part of that 11 and 0 undefeated run. They beat Illinois at Illinois. Well, Illinois this year hired Barry Lunny away from them. As they will continue to move the sticks. And LD, I don't know if folks talk about this much, but I almost prefer that you don't get that first down inside the 10, you get it just outside. There you go. Might even buy yourself a couple extra plays here. Harris, great protection. Frank Harris still on his feet into the end zone. All the champs of Conference USA defending their title with Frank Harris leading the way. Now this is a reason why this is one of the top offenses in the country. Lincoln, it's just so much to defend. Just so much blade of grass for a defense that has to cover. You've got to cover these receivers. you got to respect the inside running. But the X factor, make no mistake about it, is Frank Harris with his ability to break a defense down with his feet. And the flash from the past, Jared Sackett back in the orange and blue, splits Time the uprights. Out on the field for media. Frank Harris, a 12-yard jaunt, blocking in place, seven points on the board. Well, after the opening kickoff from WKU went out of bounds, it was a 65-yard touchdown drive capped by Frank Harris's fifth rushing touchdown on the season. A little 12-yard stroll, and LD. The blocking up front was winning on every play for UTSN. You know, they dominated the line of scrimmage, and that's kind of what they wanted to come out and set the tone. They ran the ball when they needed to, but sometimes you just got to be you, play the game on the field. They had some passing success as well. Jared Sackett with the extra point. Of course, he was here as a freshman and sophomore, transferred to Arkansas, where Jeff Trailer happened to be coaching at the time, then transferred to South Florida, and now is back to wrap up his career 
Splitting the uprights back here in the Alamo Dome. A chance to return this one. And ultimately would have been better off taking the touch back, but worth the risk there when you have Michael Matheson. And that will bring out Austin Reed. Boy, Austin Reed seemed at first like nobody wanted him. He was Division II West Florida back in 2019, led them to the national championship. 2020 Division II programs, for the most part, did not compete in football due to the pandemic. Ultimately, got an opportunity to be a backup, it looked like, when Daigie from West Virginia transferred, only for Daigie then to leave for Troy. And the job belongs to Reed, and boy, what a great fit he has proven to be. We'll sling it to Matheson, scoops it off his shoelaces, and maybe two yards as the Roadrunners able to corner him along the sideline. And there's one of your new members of that secondary, Nick Troy Fortune. Look, we talk about Bailey Zappi is in the NFL. So is a guy named Tariq the Freak. Yeah. As uh, we talk about one of the great rookies in the NFL this year, Tariq Woolen. But this is the talent. That Austin Reed has around him completed passes to 12 different men against Troy last week, including his offensive tackle. And you've got a group of receivers that can absolutely get it done. This secondary of the road one has got to be on their game. That is a forward pass. And just had one more man that Kai Robichaux needed to beat, perhaps to be off to the races. The sophomore has been a good one, earning a scholarship this year after walking on one campaign ago as a freshman. This, these are officially your starters for Jeff Trailer, but boy, do they go too deep. They will rotate them in and out. The depth that he has managed to build largely on keeping players in the state of Texas and within the city of San Antonio has paid dividends for UTSA. On second and four, on the ground, Robichaud will be two yards shot. Well, you see WKU going with a little tempo trying to make sure they can neutralize that depth you're talking about, Lincoln, where they can't rotate guys in and out on the defensive side, and they do a good job here. They're still ahead of the change. It's a short third down. This is where the offense still maintains some advantage here. Robichaux is averaging 6.7 yards per carry. He has yet to have a negative carry this year. Needs two yards for the first down. He's got it just short of midfield. Well, you can see when he gets the ball, it looks like he's about a foot off the ground. His pat level is so low, and he's running so hard, it's really, really difficult to get a clean shot. You can see the strategy. WKU does not want to allow UTSA to sub, and only their own incomplete pass. Perhaps Austin Reed's clock a little too spent up there will slow them down. Yeah, it was really defended well in the flats by this defense. Jamal Ligon, number eight, he was out in the flat. He took away that initial screen, and then that forced Reed to have to dump it down. But like you mentioned, clock going just a little bit fast. That routine play there should have been completed. Instead, it's incomplete. Late subs for UTSA, but they're afforded that as WKU also made changes. Second and 10 from their own 48-yard line, down the touchdown. It's the kind of ball game you'll have to match touchdowns with touchdowns. Stays on his feet, Malachi Corley, the sophomore, down the sideline, cuts it back in, and he'll take it into the red zone. Oh, UTSA is not the only team with a stable of wide receivers. Malachi Corley, the perfect option that time for Reed. Yeah, all these receivers can make the catch and make one guy miss, and if you don't make that tackle, man, you're going to put a defense in a lot of hurt. You saw it there. The previous play is under review. So they will officially take a look at that last tremendous gain from Malachi Corley. We will step aside and have the verdict when you rejoin us as WKU marching, trailing by seven. Time out on the field for media. That play is still under review as still on headset. Our referee today, Patrick Boy, leading this crew. Second Conference USA game for both teams. Uh, you saw clearly looking to see whether or whereabouts Malachi Corley. It'll be a great first down game regardless where he stepped out of bounds. Well, you can just see how electrifying he is in the open field. And I think both these defense have to go back to fundamentals. They've got to tackle that open field. 
and we talked about these coaches, uh, especially when we talked to Coach Trailer. Hey, he wants guys that can run to the football and get the guy down. And you can see what happens if you let an old guy open. After review, the play stands as called. It'll be first down, Western Kentucky. Oh, wow, I thought he clearly stepped out. So the Hilltoppers, this is their opening drive. Started back around their own 20. And they're going to say that that look right there just isn't clear enough. Wow, I think it split the middle of his foot. <laughs> OK. They can pick up another first down inside the five-yard line. Empty backfield for Reed. Calls his own number. And Austin Reed, still on his feet, has the first down and is about a yard and a half shy of a game-tying score. Yeah, it's so much versatility in these offenses. And touche, here, here come the Hilltoppers back again on a, on a certain pass play, and they slip their quarterback with a quarterback draw. Keeps it. Waiting for the indication right now, he is short. But you get a feeling the way that this line has moved that football, and it is a touchdown. Austin Reed is in. And WKU is just a Braden Narvis, an extra point away from tying this ball game early in the opening quarter. And you want to talk about answering the call. That's how you do it offensively. Well, they set the tone from the initial play. And obviously, the big play by Malachi Corley. And let's see if they're reviewing that play. I thought he was clearly in. I... The ruling on the field is a touchdown. That play is under review. Well, they're hoping it'll stay as a touchdown. Austin Reed at the moment has the game tying score. Look, both these teams have tremendous kickers. Sackett for UTSA, Narvison for WKU, but it's the kind of ball game that they hope they only see them trying extra points. Because this is the kind of the ball game where if one team scores in the end zone, you don't want to settle for three points. I mean, if you're at home watching this game, this is the game to watch if you want to see some offense. And I'm telling you what, these defenses better figure it out quick. And if history has shown us in the last few games here, these defenses have been trying to play catch up from the initial snap of all these games. Like you mentioned, coming down to a one-score game. And man, it's fun to watch. Obviously, the first one last year, 52-46, and obviously in the championship game, 49-41. Reed is already a graduate student. He still has two more years of eligibility. The rich get richer. And if you this could be a fine <laughs> run up there in BG. I'm telling you, you know, he's he's a little After bit review, different. The call in the field stands. Touchdown. Yeah, I thought so. I didn't think it was really much a debate, but you know, Austin Reed's got that body. You know, he's mentally and physically tough. And he showed you there with back-to-back -back runs, obviously the second one getting in the end zone. He is trying to lead WKU to the football program's 600th victory. That is slightly more than UTSA, who's only been playing for a little over 11 years. Narvison on for the game time extra point. It is good. Try is good. So eight and a half to go in the opening quarter. Time each the of these prolific immediate. offenses have had the football exactly once, and each with a touchdown to show for it. Nine play, 80 yard drive for WKU to tie this ball game up. Of course, the big play along the way was the 38 yard catch and run from Malachi Corley. Narvison will tee this one up and give the ball back over to UTSA. And this is back and forth, back and forth. We'll see if either defense can manage to find a four and out, a three and out at some point in this ball game. I hope we can catch our breath. This is a lot going on in this first quarter. And both teams have touched the football and, and had some success. And, you know, I hate to be cliche, but it's going to have to come where a defense is going to have to give their offense an extra possession. Maybe still a possession, you know, here and there in the course of this game. You can never tell what the score is looking at the UTSA sideline. They live and die for every play. This one will be returned. 
Well, UTSA, there's not many firsts left to be had. The most recent first that they secured on special teams was Chris Carpenter earlier this year, the sophomore with a 97-yard kickoff return for the touchdown, the first such touchdown in this program's first 12 seasons. Well, these guys returning kicks, they're made from a different uh, cloth, I can say that. You gotta be fearless, and Carpenter, only a sophomore, has that fearless mentality, sets this offense up in good shape. UTSA, again, just had to go 65 yards for their first touchdown. And this from 74 yards. And if they're going to find another go-ahead trip into the end zone. The handoff, and that's a nice job by WKU on first down to make second along Lorenzo Hernandez. Among those in on the stop, the grad student out of Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Yeah, give an assist to Caleb Oliver, too. He's the free safety, one of the safeties in this defense. They play three different type of safeties, too, but he comes up and makes a solid tackle in the backfield. Five wide for Frank Harris, including the top three receivers in Conference USA in receptions per ball game. The lefty quarterback finds Xavier Frank or finds Franklin Zakari Franklin for the first time today. The senior from Cedar Hill had a brilliant highlight grab last weekend at Friday night against Middle Tennessee, and there is a hilltopper down, I believe, just a flat Time tire. Let's see if it's injury. like that. That's one of their better defenders on defense, Derek Smith. Derek, who started his career in the ACC with Miami, then the Big Ten with Illinois, second leading tackler for this squad. See what's still to come here for UTSA, FAU, then back here against North Texas, and a UAB team that slipped against Rice last weekend. We'll see if that wakes up the Blazers. From their own 38-yard line, the first and 10 for Harris and company. A little over-pursuit, and a late flag comes in, perhaps a face mask. WKU is hoping for a holding call. During the run, personal foul, face mask on the defense number 11. 15-yard penalty added from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Of course, now all face masks are of the personal foul variety. And yeah, watch the tail end of this right there. You can see it. Pretty good call. Talik Allen getting the face mask home. And neither one of these offense need help. So the discipline has to be a paramount. You've got to be, you know, sound in what you're doing defensively. Run to the football. Try to get the guys down as quick as you can. That was Trey Smith and on the last carry. Harris looking at his options. He'll call his own number and then the late slide as he'll pick up a yard. That's back where he began that slide, setting up second and none. Yeah, that's a pretty good job by the Hilltoppers defense. They played a little bit zone, and you know, sometimes when you play zone, you take your chances and hope you can get pressure with your front four. And sometimes the quarterback can slip out that time to kept good contain there. Need the 35 yard line for the next first down. Harris swings one out. Oh, runs right into the one man who is being blocked. It's a heck of a play. Both of these teams understandably lost their offensive coordinators from last year's championship run in this conference. Each opted to promote from within for consistency. Well, they're doing a good job. You mentioned Will Stein. Matt Maddox is the run game coordinator as well. And the cohesion has to be the same. And you know, we talked about that with Coach Trailer. You know, his quarterback, Frank Harris, has been in his system three years now. So the system stays the same. The terminology and the voice may change from the coordinator perspective, though. Harris over the top, just through the fingertips. <laughs> Almost a remarkable connection downfield to extend this drive with Gavin Sharp, his target. Yeah, everything done right there, but just to pass. Just a little bit too much for Gavin Sharp to handle it. That would have been his fourth reception of the season, but man, what a reception that would have been. And I honestly thought we would not see the punter much in this game. And well, right I thought off they the might bat. go for it here, but that's clearly not the case. Lucas Dean, the Australian, is on. You saw Jalen Hall is standing back on his own eight-yard line. 
And WKU will be starting their second drive of the game within their own 10. So a nice punt from Lucas Dean. Pins WKU back. That's just more yards for Austin Reed to rack up on that right arm. <laughs> I mean, who are you kidding? And, you know, right now, the way this offense is going, I, I think I have to give them or not, just for the simple fact of show in the backfield. When you've got a running back that is, is running at the clip that he's been able to do it and effective, man, that does open up everything else in your offense. And that gives Austin Reed and these receivers a chance to play action pass and attack this defense vertically. Well, Jess left the defense coordinator for UTSA. He knows his men have already faced some of the top offenses in the country. Houston, Army, Texas, last week, Middle Tennessee, and it's not going to be any easier today. On the ground, a gain of maybe three and a half as they go back to Robichaux. Yeah, and this defense, when you lose six starters on a defense, some of these guys, obviously graduation, a few gone to the NFL. It's tough to duplicate what you did a year ago. That hurry up offense will move the sticks. An eight-yard gain this time with Daywood Davis. Davis, who spent his first three years in the Pac-12 in Oregon with those Ducks. Not sure if he's using the same shiny silver helmet that he had over there in Eugene. <laughs> and a flag before the snap. I believe this is a dead ball. We will see. We heard the whistle. But we did not hear any subsequent whistles insisting that play halt. Offsides on the defense number 40. Five yard penalty, first down. Yeah, usually you don't play a, a blow a play dead with a offside call, but I could have sworn we heard one whistle. Yeah, I was looking at that too. I think he said 40 on defense was Jamori Robinson, and the formation was set up that he needed to split out in his linebacker stance because they had a tight end out wide with two of the wide receivers. So it's first and five, and you imagine the entire playbook is available here. On the reverse, a little modified flea flicker, if you will. And that was the most entertaining, incomplete pass <laughs> you will see. I, I think it's just, just good decisions. Wants to know why it's not intentional grounding. Or an illegal man downfield, pardon me. You had an offensive lineman 15 yards downfield. After all those exchanges, and I think I have a feeling we're about to see a yellow flag dropped after these men are done talking. Well, they are huddled up and talking about it now. I think he's far enough a little bit away from the pocket so he can throw the ball in that instance. No, I think we're going to get a lineman and Mark Good being too far downfield. We'll, we'll get the confirmation here. There is no foul on the play. Yeah, I'd like to take another look at that as well. It's 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 awfully close, especially when you've got so much going on. You know, you've got two different handoffs in the backfield, and then they pitch it back to the quarterback. He had a tackle 15 yards downfield after three different men had touched the football with the incomplete pass. So it is second and five here for Austin Reed. Under pressure, drops it down, and they will keep this offensive drive alive and laying the lick. Malachi Corley, who already has one big play today. And he was determined to go down under his own terms. Hey, number 11 in white is, is a spark plug. Look at the energy once he catches the ball. First of all, it's a beautifully designed play, and he's saying, no, sir, you are not going to get me down with the shoulder tap. Only thing that can slow down WKU is when they themselves make a sub. And UTSA is entitled to do the same. A great play calling here. They've got a three-headed monster offensive coordinator. Out to Jalen Hall. He'll spin out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. And yeah, they've got three offensive coordinators on WKU side. Ben Arbuckle, Josh Crawford, Zach Lankford. They all have respective offensive positions, but they all have input into this offense and right now. They're calling it a complete game because they're making this defense run sideline to sideline. But Lincoln, when you do that, sometimes you soft it up in the middle. And that's where Robichaux is going to come in and could hurt them in between the tackles. So second and five. They need their own 48-yard line. There were two seconds down the play clock. It is a false start that's going to back them up. False start. 
on the offense number 76. Five yard penalty, second down. Just prior to that, you got your first look of the day at the 45 year old head coach Tyson Helton now in his fourth year on the Hilltop. Of course, he's a second generation head coach. His father, Kim, raised both he and his brother to be Division I head coaches. Tyson, former quarterback with the Houston Cougars. And what a fantastic conversation we had with him this weekend. He was a joy to talk to. Very insightful about college football and football in general. And he feels like his team may not be the most talented Lincoln, but man, this is a blue collar working type football team he has. Austin Reed, after the offensive penalty, second and 10, and it's about to be third and 10. five touchdowns and only five incomplete passes against FIU two weeks ago. This defense has been good this year on third down. This offense has been right about middle of the conference at 37% conversion. They say third and nine, slings it quickly, well short. Did not have the time to allow his receivers to go farther downfield with the pressure coming. And it's an incomplete pass. So on fourth and nine, time to punt for the first time. And that pass just didn't have the same velocity on it. And it's still good defense. And how about that? The offenses showcase on the first two drives of the game. And then here come these defenses making a statement back to back, and the Roadrunners are going to get the ball back here. Seif is standing back on his own 20 yard line, awaiting the punt from one of our two Australian punters in this one, Tom Ellard. A poor snap. Ellard might be able to run for the first down. He was behind the line of scrimmage what on that job. kick. <laughs> and this will wind up playing out beautifully for the Hilltoppers as long as Ellard's able to continue. That was fantastic. All the freshmen. Still able to boot that one away. And that might be the play of the game so far. I mean, because that was disastrous. He could have easily fumbled the snap. You know, he regroups himself. It could have easily been blown up back here about the 30-yard line, but kicks one of the better punts in that kind of situation that you will see all weekend long there. So his fellow countryman, Lucas Dean, pinned the Hilltoppers back to their own 10. The freshman responds by... Pinning UTSA back to their own seven yard line here. Let's see if the Hilltoppers bring the pressure. And they'll try to give him some breathing room. Brendan Brady's still on his feet. Brady wears that single digit number five. Any roadrunner you see wearing a single digit that was voted on by their teammates. The offensive linemen are the exception. Yes. As those are not legal numbers for the big men. Doesn't mean we don't have a few big men wearing single digits. Yeah, Oscar Cardenas. He's a big one of the biggest of them all wearing that nine. It's getting stretched thin for sure. It was Cardenas in motion there, and Brady with two carries has the first down. Yeah, that's a little bit of what this team was able to do in the championship game a year ago since Sarah McCormick running for over 200 yards in that game. That kind of kept, kept them balanced, and then they were able to attack. And if they can replicate that here this evening, run the ball with Brendan Brady. You don't need to run for 100 yards every single time, but make it effective to where the defense can at least think about it. So a couple of carries, has the Roadrunners up to their own 21. They'll stay on the ground. And a little stinger this time for the big men up front for WKU. Jeff Trailer inherited a few years ago 10 San Antonio area players, including Brendan Brady and a guy named Frank Harris. Well, of course, he still has them, but he's added. He now has 26 players from the greater San Antonio area, 87 of his 112 players from the state of Texas. It just goes to show this is the place to be. This is the program. If you want to stay near your, near your home here in the San Antonio area, this Roadrunners program is the, is the place to go. Cephas. As the defender will lose his helmet, Joshua Cephas will be stopped two and a half yards shy of that next first down. As Jaquez Evans, the linebacker, is going to have to come off for a play after his helmet came loose. Well, you can kind of see the tempo slowing down just a little bit for UTSA. Now they're trying to make sure that they get the formation, they get the team and the matchups that they want going to a two tight end set, 12 personnel. 
This might be the final play of the opening quarter. Brady falls forward. It is going to be very close. And because that was third down, boy, this could be fourth in inches where you feel like you have to punt, and UTSA cannot afford to lose Terrell Haynes, who's down right now. Jeff Trailer is already missing four offensive Time tackles. Out for injury. Haynes, his left guard, the fifth-year senior, a big reason why they've had success moving the ball up front. Right now, the reason for concern. Yeah, and when he talked to, we, we weren't sure if Makai Hart was going to get to start. Looks like he's good to go. He's been able to start this game, and Frankie Martinez has been able to step in ever since my heart has been out. But you're right, you got Tatafu as well, the left tackle. He stepped in as a sophomore. So they've got some young guys needing to step up. But make no mistake about it, Terrell Hayes, certainly a cog in the inside of this interior of the offensive line. Just a little hitch in the giddy up, it appears. That That's is a big hitch. That is, <laughs> that is big... promising. As Haynes will have to come out for at least one play. Mentioned that could be the final play of the opening quarter when they restart this clock. You're just starting to see some really individual performances on both sides of these defense. You know, that last play, Aaron Key, one of the linebackers on defense, I can't tell you how good a play that that was. He played both the quarterback and the running back in the read option look. Otherwise, that's an easy first down for the Roadrunners, but here we've got, we've got a little drama here with a little fourth and short. Now they run, wind the clock. Let's see if UTSA on a critical fourth and one. Can't imagine they're going to snap it. And they got WKU to burn a timeout. Wow. <laughs> a little gamesmanship timeout. here. Western Kentucky, that is their first. Now it's not seconds. going to be the final play of the opening quarter. Had to imagine they were playing with house money UTSA's offense. Yeah. They were just going to line up, but there was something that Tyson Helton saw out there that made him uncomfortable. Well, I think he sensed in the moment of this game, it's a big moment. We want to make sure we get it right with alignment and situational football here. He was on Jeff Brom's staff uh, earlier up there at the Hilltop with WKU. Worked for his brother out west with those Trojans at USC for happily taking the gig when the head coaching job opened up at WKU last year, led them to the second of three bowl, win, uh, bowl appearances. And now UTSA is going to have to commit to a play, and at the moment it looks like they will go for it. On fourth and less than a yard, it is a battle of the big men up front. Brady, nothing fancy, surges ahead, and we will pick back up in the second quarter where we have left off with the Roadrunners and their third possession of the day, looking to find their second lead as we're level at seven. First quarter in the books. Lincoln Rose, LaDaren McLean back with you as we are all set for Q2, 15 minutes on the clock. UTSA just got done wrapping up that first quarter with a fourth down conversion on fourth and one. Well, typically we've seen enough UTSA football games when they get a conversion like that on first down, this is where the play action pass, you've got 12 personnel, they've got the matchup they want, you may see them go deep here. Harris, the southpaw. Just couldn't get enough behind that, looking for Franklin. It'll be second and 10. That was about an eight-yard route from Franklin. And as much as you want a game plan for one of these talented receivers, that means you're leaving two guys open. Yeah, that's the thing. you you got to commit on de defense to try to take one thing away and limit the possessions if you possibly can. But that's a hard thing to do with either one of these offenses. So you are taught to really try to keep things in front, make the tackle, and make them stay a little bit off schedule with the chains. They'll go to Brady. And pardon me, no, that is the second carry of the night for Trey Smith. Traylon Smith, the senior, mentioned battled some injuries. Good to see him back there to give a little change of pace out of the backfield. So third and five, I think both of these teams were holding their breath when they punted the football away on their last drives. But each defense was able to respond. WKU showing a little bit of pressure. Now they back out. 
Need the 44-yard line, route run to the 50. JT Clark has the first down, the drive stays alive for UTSA. You know, JT Clark is so good at that about 15 to 12-yard comeback to the sideline. He's been fantastic, but he sets that up with his go routes from time to time, so these defensive backs have to play him a little bit softer than normal. He had his coming out party last year at Western Kentucky when he managed seven catches for 160 yards and three scores. That was the time of year when everybody was looking at Franklin the whole time, and yeah. Clark took advantage. Yeah, and, and Clark had one of those big catches, too, against UAB the week before that kept that drive alive for them to win also. Harris looking for it all, has Cephas, uh, just airmails it along the sideline. Yeah, that's a, that's a rare miss right there for Frank Harris. You know, he's been really good at making what we call hole throws for the quarterbacks when the cover two safety is over the top at the hash and that corner is trailing underneath. You know, that's one they may come back to because he definitely can make that throw. The safety from Miami, A.J. Brathwaite, was in the area forcing Harris to really keep it tight along the sideline. Second and 10 in Hilltopper territory. And they're going to be about three yards short when third down comes up here. And this is why this offense is so good on third down. It's not about what they do on third down. It's what they, what they do on first and second to set them up for third and four, third and three. 55% conversion, first in the Conference USA. It's remarkable that they've been consistent so far. Empty backfield for Harris, who could very well call his own number, and there's movement on the line that's going to move UTSA back five yards. And this is where you get all the finger pointing. <laughs> False start on the office number 55. Five-yard penalty, third down. Yeah, that's a killer, too. Now, now you're talking about being back off schedule, and so many of these coaches talk about that. You know, make sure you stay on schedule, and now you've got third, seven, or eight or more now. That's in favor of back to the defense. Roadrunners have already converted on a fourth down and more recently a third down to extend this drive. Harris, all the time in the world, needs an open receiver. And just great coverage downfield. Boy, it's one thing to stay honest on these receivers, but to be able to run with them that entire time and deny Harris an easy option. Well, give, give a credit to Evans right there, the inside linebacker. Number three, he's kind of mirroring the quarterback, Frank Harris, so he can't go in field. And then Hulasi, the defensive back, number 12, what a fantastic play to lay out and knock it down. I tell you what, these defenses have heard our call, and they have heated, and they are playing some lights-out defense so far in this second quarter. Khalif Halasi's coaches were excited to see him up against this trio of NFL caliber receivers to see how he would respond. And it's another punt from Lucas Dean. Our punters today are three for three, perhaps featuring a little bit more often than they had thought in this one, as each team just one touchdown from their opening drive so far. Early second quarter in San Antonio. Both teams with rushing touchdowns from their quarterbacks on their opening drives. Since then, three punts trading the possession back and forth. It's another opportunity for the visitors from Bowling Green, Kentucky, WKU, led by Austin Reed to find their first lead of the day. Yeah, it's been a nice job by both these defensive coordinators to make the in-game adjustments. And they are capitalizing on some mistakes these offenses have made. Penalties have pushed them back with the chains. They start at their own 11. As dragged down from behind by Donye Taylor. Of course, Donye and his brother, Dadrian, one of the three sets of brothers on the Roadrunner's side. Reed wants to pick up the pace on second and nine. Unleashes a rocket for the first down. As Malachi Corley, unfortunately, though, was right there along the sideline, didn't have much after the catch. Yeah, they catch the defense sleeping. The defense was out of position, and Clifford Chapman had a long way to go, Lincoln, to make that play 
But you can see the arm talent right there by Austin Reed. Chapman, the former Texas A&M Aggie defensive back, was hurt all of last year. They're trying to help fill that void with Tariq Woolen in the NFL playing on Sundays now. Yeah, they just seem to have a 6'4", 6'5", defensive back coming in year after year here at UTSA. The gain there from Jalen Hall, about four yards on first down. That pass only got four yards, but, you know, in today's football, that's an extension of the run game, and that's what you want. If you can get three, four, maybe even five yards on first down, you know, you, what we talked about, this playbook tends to open up a little bit. And they'll pick up another two and a half on the ground with Robichaud. Yeah, I like the way he runs. He is a battering ram coming through there. Great size, six foot. He's 215 pounds. You know, Coach Helton said it's running back by committee. I, I don't know about that. I, I think he's the featured back. Just the intangibles that he can bring in the attitude behind this offensive line. Third and four, they need to reach their own 39. Almost got the Roadrunners to jump. Play clock at seven. Reed has the pocket intact, able to find his receiver, Daywood Davis. Big time throw. That's a long way, and that ball gets there in a hurry. Watch this, from one hash to the opposite sideline with the trailing underneath defender. It was not bad coverage, but the pass was on the money from Austin Reed. About a yard and a half gained on first down here. You know, we talked about Austin Reed, the way he can spin that football. I mean, you know, I, I hate to make NFL comparisons, but that's an NFL throw. Just that, compare him to Bailey Zappi. You can, yeah, Bailey Zappi, that's, that's tough. Bailey Zappi's got every record you can imagine for WKU. Oh, the double pump. And just unable to stay in bounds, but another great gain for a first and 10, courtesy of Jalen Hall bringing it in. And that's why you've got to be careful when you're shuffling defenders in because the tempo gets them out of sync. And then you've got players running wide open. That's been the one difference in this defense. They've got guys running wide open. You didn't see much of that a year ago. Rashad Wisdom made the touchdown saving stop there. Wisdom, who was a late scratch before last week's game at Middle Tennessee. Looking for the go-ahead score. Austin Reed has all day man on man in the end zone and they'll say perfect coverage from corey mayfield jr the veteran as he was defending jalen hall that's yeah, pretty good coverage i actually thought austin reed would go to this pass just a little bit sooner and possibly lead his receiver right into the goal post because that was open he had a step on mayfield both games last year between these two teams came down to one score. Each ended when UTSA got a game ceiling, including a championship ceiling interception. Another tight one here. And the Roadrunners who flocked to the football cannot make the stop. More yardage after the catch for Davis. And the former Oregon Duck tormenting that's secondary for UTSA. You know, these receivers are not as big as the Roadrunners group of receivers, but man, I'm telling you what, they are every bit of elusive. They, uh, David Davis ranks 15th in the SBA, FBS in yards per catch. Lobs one in, drops it in to Davis. That's pretty right there. Hilltoppers have their first lead in San Antonio. Man, that's a thing of beauty. Austin Reed, that drive, putting on a clinic, regardless of whether there is pressure in his face. Yeah, you, you live and die by the sword. If you're going to play man and try to bring pressure, I'm telling you what, this defense is in trouble because now you got to match up with these receivers. They're already tough to catch in space, but when they get out in front of you, man, it's, it's a thing to watch. Narvison last year led all kickers in scoring across the country. Today, he's got two points. It is WKU up by seven. Reed finds Davis. WKU up on the road.
they are pinned back their own 11 yard line. WKU marches 89 yards on 10 plays to find their first lead. Again, they are pursuing program victory number 600, perhaps able to secure that today here in Texas. Well, you can kind of see the blueprint of what they're doing, and, and I agree, this is a gritty bunch. These guys can play defense, and man, they are tough as nails and scrappy on the offensive side, too. And look at this again. It's all about the matchup, Lincoln. They, they take advantage of Juan Griffin, who's just jumping into the game. It's a matchup they like with Daywood Davis, and they capitalize with a perfect pass. So Reed today, a rushing touchdown and a more traditional touchdown using that right arm of his. And it's UTSA trailing for the first time today. A flag comes in. And we'll see where this puts the Roadrunners for their next drive. After again, the return from the talented Chris Carpenter. Flag is down back around the 20 yard line. Roadrunners are coming off their Conference USA opener at Middle Tennessee. Boy, I don't know if many people wanted Middle Tennessee last weekend. They were fresh off of that upset at Miami. But the Roadrunners were not impressed. No, they weren't. And uh, they were really good on third down. They were 71% During that the game. return, personal foul, illegal blindside block on the return team number six. Penalty is half the distance to the goal, first down. Blindside block on the return is going to move the Roadrunners back to their own 10 yard line to begin this run. Yeah, I keep forgetting to wait for the referee's mic to pop in. I, <laughs> you can barely hear him out there. I keep talking over the ref there. Frank Harris has at least three guys out there that on a single completion could tie this ball game up, bring you within an extra point at least. They'll start on the ground with Brady. And another Roadrunner lineman is down. That is Tatafu, the new tackle these days for UTSA, the sophomore who came from Independence Community College. And that'll take us to a break. Second and long for UTSA, trailing by a touchdown with their starting left tackle currently down. UTSA coming out of an injury timeout with a second and long coming up, pinned back in their own half of the field, down by a touchdown. Finley Tatafu right now is the fifth offensive tackle that Jeff Trailer is without now this year. He had to be helped off the field, not able to put all of his weight. Of course, at six foot four, 335 pounds, needed some help coming off. And let's see if this moves the Roadrunners farther back. It will. And. LD, this is something you took for granted the past couple years with a veteran line. False start on the offense number 61. Five-yard penalty, second down. Now you start mixing in some backups, and not everybody's familiar with the snap count. Now, yeah. that's not an excuse for Kevin Davis, the veteran right guard. Now you just seem a little bit of uh, anxiousness up front, and you know Frankie Martinez has played right tackle. They shipped him to the left tackle now with Tatafu out. We'll keep an eye on that matchup as he's matched up pretty much against Jawan Jones, which is one of their best pass rushers. And just trying to get that penalty yardage back. It'll be third and long after the gain from Brady. Again, both these teams won their openers. It was two weeks ago for WKU, that blowout at home against FIU. UTSA opened the slate last week in Middle Tennessee. That's a good, tough inside run in by Brendan Brady. And you got to be careful here if, if you're offense. You don't want to hold this ball too long, especially if they're going to bring some inside pressure. UTSA needs the 22-yard line. Harris has time and drops it in. Franklin with the catch. He had two receivers in the area. Looked like he had overthrown one, but no. Zakari Franklin keeps the drive alive. There was no doubt about where they need to get this football to. And Zakari Franklin, like you mentioned earlier, 
He's just one of those guys that can change the dynamics of this game. And that's a very much needed conversion on third down. I just think they didn't need to punt that ball away. They've got to hold on to this ball, trying to get some points here before this half is out. So they overcome that false start penalty at the start of this drive. Can they overcome injuries, a couple of them to the offensive line already today? Smith trying to turn that corner, Trey Smith, with the 10-yard gain. Yeah, this is a nice look here. It's an inside zone look. It's a read option. Quarterback reads it well, but it's blocked down. You see Kevin Davis. He's got his man blocked to the inside. But you see the versatility of Trey Smith. He's able to bounce it outside for a big game. Roadrunner stringing some first downs together. Finally can pick up the pace. But Harris is going to slow things down here at midfield. Yeah, you're going to start to see as they try to show the tendencies of running the ball on first down. They get this defense to suck down one more time. Play action pass is good. Got two tight ends for extra protection. Harris able to skip past one man in the backfield, falls forward for a two-yard gain. Yeah, and I, and I think the defensive coordinator, Tyson Summers, thought exactly what I'm thinking. He's saying, okay, they've shown that one look a couple of times on first down. Play action pass is soon to come as they doubled the two eligible receivers out in the route with the safety in the middle. Just nowhere to go to football for Frank Harris. Harris 7 for 11 for 78 yards right now. And a rushing touchdown. All the time he needs. Franklin found open space, had a zip code all to himself. And that's about an 18-yard gain down to the 32. Yeah, this is just where you've got a quarterback that has been in the system three consecutive years and understanding what defenses are trying to do to him. Frank Harris overthrows Joshua Cephas. Yeah, they're just not on the same page there. You saw Frank Harris is saying, hey, I thought you were going to go a little bit more towards the goalpost, a little bit skinnier. But you saw there Cephas rounded it off and flattened that route, came across the 10-yard line, Lincoln, and that's why that pass uh, sailed off. Now, remember Harris in that win against Middle Tennessee on three straight drives had an interception that was still room for improvement coming into this week. For this offense of Jeff Trailers, they kept putting their defense in some tough spots. Harris trying to lead a game-tying drive here into the red zone. And his first catch of the day by Tyke Ogle Kellogg, who's been a fixture of this program, now a fifth-year senior. Yeah, this is a nice matchup. Kellogg at 6-5. Nice range there, good route, good catch. Smith has it. Through the ankle tackle. Got stood up by Talik Allen, who tried to rip here. it loose, and moments later, the ball may have come free. Ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by the offense. So the Roadrunners do fall on it. Talik Allen opted to try to stand up the ball carrier and rip it loose. I think another teammate was more successful after the fact. About second and four for UTSN. And off to Brady. Flag comes in from the secondary. It's always in that offensive hold, and, and that uh, umpire throws that flag right there in the middle of the field. Brady's carry was good enough for a first down. Personal foul, hands, hands to the face, face on the defense number 99. Okay. Penalty is half of the goal. Right. Automatic first down. Stand corrected. So first and goal pending for the Roadrunners now. You can just kind of see a gutty little drive put together here. This is what they need. It's been a while since this offense has clicked. And now they get the benefit of a personal foul. They've got first and goal. If necessary, is this four down territory? I think so. I think you absolutely got to try to keep pace. Brady. And the surge begins. The big bodies up front. Waiting for the indication. Touchdown. That's 
just a fantastic drive. I mean, to come back, you've had a couple of series where you struggled, but when you get down here, it's just no nonsense. You gotta just rugby style your way with the scrum and get into the end zone, and it gets a big push from his offensive line, and that's how you answer the goal. He was a full two yards short, kept those legs churning. He still isn't down. <laughs> Now back when it was Reggie Bush, that was an illegal play, but they have since made it legal. Yeah. You called it the rugby style. That scrum, all Try the big men up front paying Time off for the, the men here in the 2 on 0 Inside four minutes in the opening half, it's a brand new ball game. Brendan Brady helps tie it up. Each team has held a touchdown lead, but boy, did UTSA need to be able to finally come up with a response. Yeah, that was the drive that you needed to kind of get things back into motion for this offense. And it really was capped off and started by the Frank Harris to Sakari Franklin. Third down conversion, Lincoln. That was a huge pass play. That sparked this drive. And you had to come back and answer because you figure Western Kentucky had found some things on their side offensively as well. Now, if WKU plays their cards right and can find an answer here, they also start the third quarter with the football as well. Yeah, and that's the game within the game, right? If you got to manage these positions well, now I say that, we can still see three more scores in the next three, <laughs> three and a half minutes. Who knows with this? We didn't think we'd see the punter as many times we've seen for both sides of this game so far either. We got to grow that subscription base in Australia for ESPN+. Plus. <laughs> Lucas Dean, how good is your punter if he's wearing a single digit in Austin? Speaking, or pardon me, in San Antonio, uh, Austin, of course, up the road, and Austin's in the huddle right now there he is, for yeah. WKU. You know, very efficient game. We knew that coming in. He, he's going to be pretty surgical with the ball and and this defense has this year been a little bit different they've given up more yards than they've had in years past at 253 a game that's seventh in conference usa so they're taking advantage of some of those inefficiencies that we're seeing right now on first down austin reed still upright he'll call his own number Pick up about half of the yardage. Yeah, and I think if you're just left, I think you can live with that, right? That's what you want. If you can have everybody covered and make the quarterback have to tuck it down and go to the sideline, I think that's a win for the defense. They're going to say he stepped down after a three-yard gain, so still a decent chunk ahead of them for the next first down. Yeah, neither one of these defenses bringing pressure. That's, that's been the one thing so far in the first half. Neither one needing to bring pressure. Just trying to get home with their front three, maybe even their front four. Reed will sling it. The Roadrunners will force the play back to the middle of the field where they have some numbers. And it, it's going to be another three and a half yard gain. That time linking up with Corley with that big 38 yard catch on their opening touchdown draw. On third down, it was a chance for UTSA's defense to get off the field instead. WKU. We'll get that chain game moving once again. Well, you're seeing a perfect example of RPO football. Three plays in a row, two passes. Now you saw the run at the end of that one. Reed pointing, directing his receivers. It is a tipped pass, the reason why it was short of the intended receiver, Malachi Corley. Yeah, Cyrus Simon, number 17, left defensive end, 6'4", with the wingspan of about seven or eight feet when he gets that big paw up and knocks that pass or actually just tips it enough to where it lost a lot of velocity. So second and 10 for Austin Reed and this offense. The pride of St. Augustine Beach out of Florida. They'll keep it on the ground. And about a five yard gain for Robichaud. And it's just another tough run. Tough inside run. Make the defense have to think about it. And we know how explosive this offense can be. Quickly out to the left side. Had a receiver blocking for him. Jalen Hall is stopped after maybe two. And That's it a is great play. fourth and a long three coming up. Well, you want to talk about cornerback playing defense at this level? This is a perfect example. Corey Mayfield Jr. I mean, that is absolutely textbook. Take it on the blocker, Lincoln, keeping his eyes upfield and making the play 
on the receiver. Zeep is back to return. Eller, the punter, back on. The freshman who, remember, is a little dicey the last time they lined up to punt. He took a lick. See, I think WKU still talking this one over. They've got their timeouts. They're going to have to burn one here. They wanted to Time melt out. as much of that clock as possible. Western Kentucky, that is their second. It'll be 30 seconds. So one timeout remaining for WKU, but the number of timeouts that matters is Frank Harris has the full allotment yeah. of three timeouts in both sidelines for the final minute and a half. And that's a world of time. And yeah, I agree with Coach Helton. Hey, let's burn this, let's, let's, let's talk about it. You know, if we get the look we like, do we want to mess around with the, some kind of a fake punt? No, I don't think so. But I think most importantly, we're going to punt this ball. And everybody count your man in front and make sure you've got the protection so we can get the kicker free to punt the ball. Mention Cephas had a touchdown pass last year against WKU. Can he do something here on special teams? against the Conference USA runner-up from last year. Much smoother. The punt from Eller this time. Cephas from his 11. Joshua Cephas between the hash marks. Brought down to the 22. And that's where Frank Harris and the Roadrunners will set up. Mindful that they have a minute 15 to work with. And WKU will start the second half of the football. Yeah, I love the fact that Cephas not wasting any yardage, right? That's the hidden yardage in the game. Catch the ball, get immediately upfield and get what you can get and we know this offense historically with number zero back there running the running the ship it's as good as you'll see in college football in a two-minute drill situation they are lethal and they can get surgical with the ball especially with three timeouts here team record 414 yards in last week's ball game passing for Harris has Franklin just can't keep it in play. So second and 10 coming up. You know, talking to head coach for WKU, Tyson Helton said one priority was he loves his secondary this year, but he wants to try to help them out by getting some pressure with that D line. But that's been tough to come by. It has been very tough. And, you know, I mentioned that neither team bring in some heat with, with an extra guy in the blitz. Very seldom they've rushed five guys, but it's been predominantly three or four-man rush. We've seen that secondary be able to stay glued to their receivers. Harris across the line of scrimmage. And we may have a flag come in late. None have been thrown yet as Harris winds up into the bench over there on WKU's sideline. Let's watch the tail end of this. That's a legal hit. Yeah, you saw Simpkins there. He he definitely made contact well within, well, out of bounds. Not sure what the discussion is on that. You can understand a slightly partial crowd here inside the Alamo Dome. <laughs> looking out for their QB1. Gamecock operator, please reset the clock to one minute. One minute, yeah, thank you. Two seconds back on this clock. Empty backfield for Frank Harris. It is third and four. They need the 38-yard line. Down the middle, has it. The clock will briefly stomp as they move the sticks after Franklin brings them closer to midfield and still almost a minute to work with. Harris wants another big chunk into traffic and unable to hang on to it after the big lick. It was Karch Gardner looking for his first squeeze of the day. I tell you what, if you wanted to come in and make an impact in the game, if you can hold on to this, you have got a fan club because you know you're about to get popped. And Gardner couldn't hold on to it. That would have been his fourth reception of the year. It was Simpkins who blew up the play of the safety. Still three timeouts for UTSA to work with. Here at the end of the opening half. They'll get what they can. Cephas dives forward about five, maybe six yards, and out of bounds. Yeah, you could just see him go through his progressions. He went through his first two reads, 
on this left side. Didn't like it. Thought to scramble, but saw Cephas out the corner of his eyes. Dump it down. That gets you a favorable situation here on third down. Forced out by Talik Allen. Looking for another third down conversion. WKU had a tackle who jumped into the neutral zone. Fortunate UTSA didn't move. Cephas spins forward, has the first down easily inside the 40-yard line. Good old-fashioned two-minute drill. I feel like both these offenses are playing the two-minute drill nonstop, regardless of how much time's on the clock. Yeah, it seems like it's been that to start the entire UTSA, game. This is a that great is first. Uh, you know, uh, example of quarterback and receiver being on the same page. It's an option round. If that defensive back is inside, the receiver knows that that ball is going to come on his outside shoulder, and Frank Harris puts it absolutely perfect. Roadrunners call their first timeout of the opening half. Still two remaining. Boy, during Jeff Trailer's tenure now, his third season at the helm of UTSA, 18 one-score ball games, and the majority of those have gone the way of this young program. Yeah, and, and you just have to think that, man, it's just the resolve of this team how they continue to just find a way to win the game, even when they're not playing their best, even when all hope is lost, they just find a way to make the play on the field. And that's what it takes sometimes. All these all these teams in Conference USA, very evenly matched. You've got some great teams. Now the program's young. The roster isn't. 16 super seniors, <laughs> including Frank Harris, who next year could be extra super. First and 10 <laughs> for the Roadrunners. Down the middle, that's a dangerous ball with three men in the area looking for Ogle Kellogg. Yeah, he might have locked in on Ogle Kellogg just a little bit. He locked in because Sakari Franklin was wide open about the 35-yard line with the closest defender about 15 yards away. He just didn't see him there. I'm really shocked that the Hilltoppers defense staying in zone coverage. That's dangerous because you just give this guy too much time. Franklin. Does not get the block. Great He'll play. lose a yard. And UTSA burns their second timeout. Now, with Jared Sackett back in town, I do think UTSA would consider on a fourth down timeout. giving him a chance. UTSA, that is Right here, it would be a 57-yard field length. goal. I don't Game think that's what operator. they have as Please top priority at the moment. Back on the clock. But I think on fourth seconds. down, you might you. see him given that opportunity if that was going to be the final play of the opening half. Yeah, it's certainly, you know, something to definitely uh, think about there. But I I think here you've got to get to a more comfortable range, obviously. I think they still got to get beyond the 35-yard line, get closer to the 30-yard line. If you cannot pick up that first down, which is at about the 29-yard line. So it may be a situation if they get a big chunk here, Lincoln, they may try to hurry up and go for it on fourth down, get the, you know, get the first down, then take a shot in the end zone if you can and reserve that field goal opportunity. But it's all contingent on what they do here successfully on this third down. Third and 11, will WKU bring the pressure? Harris with plenty of time. Frank Harris is ripped down from behind. Two yards short. He thought it was by the face mask. This is not a reviewable call if no hankies are dropped. This looked like something in the WWE. That's a close line, isn't it? Well, I don't think initially it was the face mask, but at the end of the play, that's when he felt the grab. Roadrunners are going to have to burn their timeout. final timeout here. That is their final timeout. 30 seconds. Again, it's not reviewable. And frankly, I don't think there's anything conclusive there. Will Ignat comes through with, at the moment, the big stop, the former Tennessee volunteer. Jeff Trailer. Of course, he's your cover model of Texas football. <laughs> Dave Campbell's Bible for the sport here in the Lone Star State, the late Dave Campbell. I brought the cover of this hope. fall's magazine, and Ignat enjoying his big stop. And here is Sackett with what would be a 48, maybe a 49-yard field goal try. He's very capable, especially here in the Dome. We mentioned his journey. Two years here in San Antonio, went to Arkansas, then to USF. This one from 49, good. 
Jared second as time expires gives the Roadrunners their second lead of the ball game. A rematch of last year's championship. A slightly lower scoring affair here in San Antonio as we reach halftime at the Alamo Dome. Well, the opening drive of this one between these two teams picked up where last year's two games left off. Both teams get touchdowns to get the scoring started. Yeah, this offense went right down the field, and Austin Reed was surgical with the football. He found some open receivers, just dipping and dodging, kind of dinking and dumping a little bit. But once he did that to some of his receivers, and they were there getting into the end zone, end zone, it was a thing of beauty to watch. So his rushing touchdown tied the game. The passing touchdown gave them a lead. This was Frank Harris with the first score on the opening drive, a 12-yard touchdown run. And then he would start to find some familiar names through the air. Yeah, you know, this is what this offense can do. When you take a couple of things away, the X factor is number zero, the quarterback getting into the end zone. And he was able to find some of his favorite targets to Zakari Franklin. Now you've got Trey Smith bouncing outside. This offense doing some good things. And I thought this was a key play in that first half at big time third down conversion. The only difference on the scoreboard, Jared Sackett's 49-yard field goal. Sackett will kick off to start the third quarter. After WKU won the toss, this ball game defer to the second half. They have a chance to march downfield for their second lead of the day. Again, Lincoln Rose, LaDarren McLean with you. Both of these teams, 1-0 and o to start conference. TSA defense go out there and get a quick stop. Take a look at numbers for Austin Reed. As he has found five different receivers today. That includes Daywood Davis for the touchdown. He'll swing it out of the backfield. Robichaud doesn't go down easily initially, but it buys time for the Roadrunners to get numbers. That is something that Jeff Trailer was being grilled about from the local media midweek missed tackles, and he looked, said, look, by definition, you can call the first man not getting the tackle a missed tackle, but he is buying time for the rest of the swarm to get there. And basically, if you're not giving up yardage after that missed tackle, it's not concerning me one bit. Meanwhile, Clifford Chapman's going to have some dreams about that missed interception. Yeah, right through his arms, didn't he? But you know, what Coach Trailer's trying to tell people, we're playing some pretty good football players. We're playing some great quarterbacks. <laughs> you know, I mean, Toon and, and Houston, and, you know, again, you, you've got some big-time players, and so, and it may look a little bit different. Here's a big third down here. What does WKU draw up on third and nine? They need their own 35-yard line. Still plenty of time on the play clock. Six seconds for Austin Reed. Had his man, brilliant coverage, denying Matheson the chance to sit down and squeeze in that one. Ken Robinson. And yeah, this is good defense. It's a man free. And so every defensive back is locked in to a, a receiver. And Ken Robinson, Lincoln, I'm telling you what, that was textbook coverage. No pass interference, uses the free hand to knock the pass down. I didn't know we were allowed to have a three and out in this ball game. I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's a rare bird for sure. But Ellard's been fantastic on his punts. The freshman, Cephas, with the fair catch at the 37, and that was where Frank Harris and the Roadrunners will begin the second half of the football. So Frank Harris in that opening half, 13 of 21 passing, 135 yards through the air, one touchdown on the ground, both rushing touchdowns for the Roadrunners, one from Harris, one from Brendan Brady. I thought this offense ran the ball very well. They were running at uh, just about five yards a rush in that first half. And you see the efficiency once again by Frank Harris. Even when he had time, you know, again, he was still trying to find something downfield. 
Every man who's carried the football for UTSA today is averaging four and a half yards or better, and that includes Trey Smith with the first down. Yeah, here it is, an inside power. You got Cardenas, he's lead blocking the tight end. And it's just power football, and that's a staple of the Roadrunners offense. It's just a line up and knock the guy off in front. From the Roadrunner 49. The secondary has been brilliant for WKU. When Harris rolls out, they have not given him anything downfield, but he'll take the seven yards before finally being routed to the sideline by Halasi. You know, that's a great point. I was trying to say that. It got a little twisted. You know, he's had time, but sometimes the receivers have been locked up. And again, that's to your point, the coverage on the back end has been phenomenal. Taking away the big play, you can live with some of the dink and dunks underneath. Second and three. Brady doesn't get touched until he's across the first down marker. Ignat among those in on the stump. You gotta love this guy. I mean, he is just a no-nonsense type running back. He's physical, and he's just a good kid. We talked to Coach Trailer, highly intelligent and as tough as nails. He's great in the pass protection, but you can see once he makes his decision to run head down, pads lowered, he's a force to deal with. No nonsense from this year's running back. Last year's running back was sincere. First <laughs> and 10. Harris to Cephas. About a 15-yard gain for Joshua Cephas. He knows he's going to take the contact, so he might as well make the catch. You know, he's really good going across the middle of the defense. He's got a big body, 6'3", 190 pounds. Empty backfield. Finds Brady for another 10 yards. That's your running back split out wide. Now they got this defense guessing. They got the defense trying to pick the right defensive call, and they just get outflanked here. Cardenas again making a great block, and this is just a long handoff to that sideline, and Brady getting upfield again. UTSA can still pick up one more first down at the one-yard line. Brady right up the middle into the teeth of that defense. Among those in on the stop again, Derek Smith, the talented linebacker, out of Jacksonville. And how about this offensive line getting back stabilized again? Frankie Martinez, he moved over to the left side and left tackle. Now you've got this offensive line. They're starting to feel a little bit of a, of a cohesive unit now. And these guys are road grading the, the defensive line out of the way. Looking for that stretch, cutting it back inside, looking for the end zone, ball is loose, Cephas falls on it, touchdown UTSA. I've got your back. On the field, ball was fumbled into the end zone, recovered by the offense. Joshua Cephas falls on the fumble from Carpenter. Yeah, this is a great play by Carpenter. He does everything right but secure the ball, and there it is. It pops out at about the one-yard line, and there's Cephas there being Johnny on the spot, and yes, that's a great camera shot as he secures the touchdown, and when it's your night, it's your night. What a time to have some of your best hands in the area. Squeeze that <laughs> one in. Roadrunners with a couple of unanswered scores. Joshua Cephas, a unique way, finds his way into the end zone to take the UTSA lead to 10. Well, after the Roadrunners found the final score of the first half, they turn right back around. Their defense forces the first three and out in this ball game against that WKU vaunted offense. And that set up Frank Harris to do his thing. Yeah, we talked about one of these defenses had to stand up, and they did a great job in the first half. But which defense was going to give the offense that extra possession? We saw it there. You know, they took the initial drive, you know, from Western Kentucky and shut them down, got the ball back. And then that offense of UTSA was able to go down and score. And that's the difference in the ball game. Quick 10 point turnaround just like that in the course of the game. You're just worried that Jeff Trailers bunch takes themselves too seriously and <laughs> forget to have fun sometimes. It just seems like it has a lot of energy. A chance to return this one. 
Down by two scores, but speed to spare. Sackett might be the last man with a chance, just slows him down, and that is a late hit to tack on another 15 yards after the return from Michael Matheson. Oh, just a ill-advised decision to get in that final lick. That's gonna take the ball up closer to midfield. I mean, this is just blazing Personal speed. Foul. No blind hit out of bounds this on the kick. This is a guy that is 12. faster just 15 yards most, and there it is. Taylor, Taylor the right run. at the end. It'll be first down, Western Kentucky. Donye Taylor just going to be smarter than that. And that does take the ball across midfield to UTSA's 45. WKU's already had some of the longer scoring drives today. This could be the shortest one of the day for either team. Austin Reed, who could not find a first down on that first drive this quarter. Let's see what they can do here from 45 yards down. The rifle one out to the sideline. That's quickly found Corley, but the Roadrunner defender able to shed his blocker Force Corley out of bounds after a gain of three. Yeah, this is the first time that we've got Davion Irvin Poindexter. He's technically the number two running back in the backfield. First time he's into the game, he's number two in the backfield. Yeah, former Indiana Hoosier who got to suit up against his former teammates earlier this year, a game that WKU probably should have won. They had a chance with a game-winning field goal at the end of regulation. Reed again, quick to get rid of it, but it's going to be a first down. That was long enough for Daywood Davis to run the route to get ahead of the sticks. You know, all these receivers on both teams, they're so good and technically sound in the route running. That's a great route by Davis to sit down in that zone. And once you get that first first down, that's when you can keep that pedal floored. Yeah. Put the pressure on the defense, up tempo. Reed wants it all over the top, broken up. More brilliant coverage from this secondary from Corey Mayfield Jr. You want to talk about a, a player that is continuing to take that next step. This is outstanding coverage because he's beat, but he bakes the throw. There is a flag down in the end zone, possibly for after the fact. They got tangled up with one another and actually just, I'm, it is not a flag, it's some other paraphernalia. <laughs> It's still a heck of a play. Corey Mayfield Jr. stepping his game up. He is coming to be one of these lockdown corners in Conference USA. Empty backfield for Austin Reed with five receivers to choose from. Will they come with some heat? Under pressure, man on man again. Offensive pass interference will be the call here on Malachi Corley. As he was blanketed by Clifford Chapman until he wasn't. I think that's going to be an easy call. You saw his arms extend. Pass interference on the offense number 11. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Still second down. Boy, I always feel like offensive pass interference can be more derailing than a defensive pass interference. Because yeah. one's just a first and 10. This is going to be 25 to go. Yeah, it, it, it eliminates the play. Now you got to go 15 yards from where the line of scrimmage was, and so that's a double whammy. And you know what? Some of these offensive players, they know how to get away with that, but that was a little bit too blatant. And now this defense can pin their rears. They need the 24-yard line for a first down. Let's see what they have in the playbook on second and 25. Crowd making it tough to hear. Reed gets around the first tackler. And about a nine yard gain for Austin Reed. It's gonna set up third and about 17. How about that? Austin Reed just taking a busted play. And it looked like he was trying to audible to a sprint option play. And Robichaud thought something else. He went opposite, but Austin Reed kept going, picked up something. But they still got a mile here on third down to convert. I think the Hilltoppers are going to give themselves two plays to get this if necessary. Again, they need the 24-yard line here in UTSA territory. 
He has six defensive backs. Play clock's down to three. Play clock's at zero. And they are going to move back another five yards unless WKU got a timeout. I see the flag back there at about the 24-yard line. Prior based to the delay of game, timeout. Okay. Western Kentucky. That is yeah, their Based first. on their body language, it looked like timeout they got the, the timeout. Will that cost them in a back and forth ball game? We step aside here in San Antonio. WKU down by two scores. Last time out called by WKU. They are 50% on third down. They are facing a third and 17 when they reemerge from this break. Lincoln Rose, LaDarren McLean with you, LD. Any other numbers stand out to you? Well, I, I think the rushing yards for UTSA is has been impressive. They've done it physical style right in the middle of this defense. Game clock operator. And I'm really shocked the way the, the Hilltoppers have not conversely been able to run the football. They've been pretty much one dimensional in the game so far. You know, with the running of Brendan Brady, Roadrunners have been able to shorten this game a bit. WKU likes to be a 40-point team. It might be hard to find 40 points in this one. You imagine they're going to the air here. Empty backfield, third and 17. Now looking for yardage after the tackle. Blowing up the play, Dadrian Taylor. Oh, there's one of those broken tackles again that Jeff Trailer's going to love. <laughs> You know, Dadrian Taylor, you know, people don't understand. He, he's arguably one of the fastest players on this team, but he's on defense. He's an outside linebacker. He's really the embodiment of this defense, and he's the first guy to make the play. He didn't get him down, but the rest of the defense there was the seal to deal. LD, they're going to line up to go for it on fourth and 15, and I very much believe they plan to snap this football. That's they a big the, gutsy call. They need the 24-yard line. Not much would be gained from a punt. Too far for a field goal, even for Narvison. Here they come. Zero blitz here. And wisely not intercepting that football on fourth down, Clifford Chapman. As good coverage for UTSA. Well, it's one of the rare times they bring some heat from the defense. The coverage is there. Pass is just a little bit too high with a receiver to adjust, and you're right, Chapman making the smart play, not going all out to make that INT. I'm saying that tongue-in-cheek. I know he wanted the pick. Everybody's instinct is to intercept that ball. He's lucky he couldn't, Yeah. as that would have surrendered about 15 or 20 yards of field position. So Roadrunners have the last two scores. They ended the first half with Jared Saget's field goal. It's not a rule in football, but it seems like any team that can get those final points in the closing moments of the first half, yeah. something seems to carry over to the second half. And, and that's why the Hilltoppers defense got to play stellar. They've, they've got to get off the field and not surrender more than three points if they can control it. All right, can the Roadrunners shorten this football game on the ground? Brady just one yard on that carry. Yeah, and I think at times this defense has looked really, really good. And it's just... Sometimes the road runners have just made that extra little play to extend a drive to convert a third down, break a missed tackle. One of these two programs will be 2-0 and in conference. As the pass broken up by that talented line for the Hilltoppers, third and nine coming up. Yeah, and that's a big man right there, number 99. Yeah, Broderick Martin, the fifth-year senior from Tuscaloosa. This is a, a, a very good-sized defensive front. They, not many defensive lines averaging 300 pounds in their front three. This is a 3-4 base type defense, multiple front. So their big boys up front are indeed big boys. Harris, a little jump pass. And credit to WKU, their defense has been put in some tough situations, including right there, and they have come up presumably with a stop getting this football back for Austin Reed. Yeah, and you figure they had to. It was a point in the game, still plenty of time in this game, but just far as momentum, you don't want to get too far and behind, you know, in this game to where you feel like you got to play catch up, that you get a little bit out of your game plan. So credit to the Hilltoppers defense to come up with the play and force a punt here. Mentioned Tyson Helton played for his father, Kim, as a Houston Cougar. Back then, the Cougars, of course, were in Conference USA. 
Kim Helton was the first family member to be Conference USA Coach of the Year. That's an award that in 2019 his son Tyson was also able to claim. Let's see if Tyson's men can find a comeback. Down two scores following the fair catch from Jalen Hall as we step aside for a break here in San Antonio. Well, in the Jeff Trailer era, UTSA is 13-3 and against Conference USA foes. And when it comes to home sweet dome, Roadrunners against all opponents during the past three seasons, 13-2. and Just that second loss earlier this season in overtime against Dana Holgerson's Houston Cougars. Yeah, and it took every bit of football that we could decide in that one. And uh, this team is tough in this building. Uh, these fans are starting to flock in here and support this team, and these players are starting to fill off of that. And the energy and excitement is now a home field advantage. And you come in here, one, you better be able to score points because this offense plays well on this field. It's a fast track. And so far, so good here in this game as well. Lincoln Rose, LaDarren McLean, along with 22,000-plus of our closest friends yeah. here in the 2 one Good crowd. Good crowd. So Austin Reed will begin this drive after his defense forced a punt from his own 10-yard line. Able to find his receiver out wide, looking for speed, looking for that breakaway up to midfield as again, successfully dialing up Daywood Davis, who already has a touchdown today. I'm telling you what, these receivers got speed for days. That's just an easy hitch route. That's supposed to be a five, six yard catch and you go down, but he turns that into a big time game. Not going to give the defense a chance to catch its breath, but with that said, that front four able to limit it to one yard. Well, you see right off the bat, the defensive adjustment. They brought Corey Mayfield from the other side of the field, and they brought him over the top on Daywood Davis. So now you've got best on best, I think, as far as receiver and defensive backs go. Christian Clayton among those in on the stop, the big 310-pound defensive end from Fort Worth. Davis and Corley each with six catches today. They've combined for over 160 yards. Reed airs it out. A little timing pattern with his receiver. Oh, a ball that looked to be uncatchable, but a flag will fly in. And was it because there was contact even earlier than that final bump? And there is another big man down for UTSA at the same time, but another look here. Pass interference. Uh, Chapman, one of defense number four. It's an easy call. 15-yard penalty from and the previous even spot. Even if the pass is not even going his way, you, you can't make Time that kind of field contact. For an injury. Chapman cut off the route. But again, right now, the injury timeout for a Roadrunner defensive lineman. As Jeff Trailer has come out to check on one of his student athletes. 6.04 to go here in the third quarter. It was 14 all. Roadrunners took a three point lead into halftime, tacked on another score here in the third. Again, third meeting for these two teams in the last 12 months. They are going to bring a cart out onto the field. Now, in the college game, again, defensive pass interference, just a 15 yard penalty, not a spot foul. We take a look at both these teams who came into tonight, 1-0 and oh in Conference USA play. The Mean Green sitting atop the standings at the moment. And how about Rice against UAB a weekend the, ago? How about those feisty night birds? There are no more teams in Conference USA where you can just look at the schedule and say, that's a no, victory. No, no. And, you know, we talked about the home field advantage here in San Antonio in the Dome. And, a lot of these schools, I'm telling you, you don't want to go in and play that. And some of the non-conference matchup teams, some of these Power Five conferences coming in to play some of these teams, they don't want to mess with these guys. It's this competitive league. It's an offensive league for sure. And now the defenses are starting to show up and play football. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough conference. WKU's already seen FIU. FIU is up next on the Roadrunners schedule. And still slow to get up, but they help him up on the cart. 
As remember, it was a defensive pass interference call against Clifford Chapman, who cut off the route of the receiver. And it'll have a first and 10 from the 38 yard line coming up for the Hilltoppers. By the way, next time the Hilltoppers are at home against UAB, DJ Diesel will be in town. Man. And you have to imagine, any time a college football coach hears there's going to be a seven-footer in town, they're, they're licking their chops. But <laughs> DJ, DJ Diesel on October 21st, he's already played out his eligibility over there in Baton Rouge with yeah. LSU and I'm told had a pretty good NBA career but under the name of Shaquille O'Neal. Meanwhile, the Roadrunners, almost the entire team is flocking out to their injured teammate. What a sign of brotherhood there. Yeah, I think that's 52, Zach Causey. Yeah, that's exactly who it is. Again, didn't want to speculate. We didn't have a good look on it as trainers were quick to surround him. But Causey, the backup nose tackle, the junior. <laughs> Whoever's driving that cart, it's going to feel like they're on I-35. <laughs> They're going to be able to get out of that congestion. <laughs> yeah, the dodge traffic. Oh, man. A tough moment for him. That's a hard to young player, too. Getting into the rotation. And you saw the love and support from his teammates. You, you know, as a player, that's the one thing you hate to see. You know it's a part of the game. And the best thing you can do for your teammate that's fallen is go out there and, and play your hearts out and finish this thing off. So again, Austin Reed leads this offense back out for a first and 10. Reed so far 19 of 28 passing for 219 yards, a touchdown through the air, and he himself with a touchdown run as well. Touchdown strike was a day with Davis in the first half. Got Matheson in the slot. Keep your eye on four. He'll never look that way and pull down from behind for just a gain of one. And that man looking trim wearing the number nine is Brandon Brown. <laughs> and he just leaps out, just grabs the jersey. That just shows you how strong Brandon Brown is. He is one of two men, big men dressed to the nines for UTSA. <laughs> the nines getting stretched out. UTSA has to have the two heaviest number nines in the nation. <laughs> oh, I love it. Brown at 305, the tight end Cardenas at a much trimmer 285. And they're going to say no gain, and it's about to be even worse news as WKU is going to move backwards. False start on the office number 75. Five yard penalty, still second down. And our referee, Patrick Foy. That's Gunnar Britton, who actually had a reception last week against Troy when a ball was deflected in the air. Hauled it in to keep a drive alive. Well, relatively speaking, this, this offensive line has been shoved around just a little bit. They've got eight underclassmen, and they've been trying to just get back to full force here. They gave up five sacks a week ago. They've done well. No sacks in this game so far. They need the 28-yard line. They're about to need even more. What was that announcer saying about no sacks in this ball game? <laughs> I jinxed it. Tremaine Bell comes flying through. Man, this is just a whip. And you saw it right there, Vincent Murphy, the right guard. The communication was off. He thought somebody was going to pick him up on the inside. And he just rele uh, releases Bell. And Bell had a free run to the quarterback to get that first sack of the game. I think I saw that technique on Monday Night Football. The old late, the old late block. Just let, let yeah. him go. Been a part of that on the other side, receiving those hits. Empty backfield for Austin Reed on third and 20. Has plenty of green ahead of him. He'll go into a slide seven yards short of a first down, but this is going to allow the offense to stay on the field. 
Yeah, that's a that's just great pocket awareness. You can feel the pocket kind of collapse, but you know the defense is in man coverage. Nobody accounting for you as a quarterback. So yes, that Spider-Man sense has to go. And I just got to get something right to make it favorable. It's not ideal. And it's better than fourth and 20 plus. It's fourth and nine here. Yeah, fourth and nine. Still needing that 28-yard line. Timeout, UTSA. Both teams have now burned one timeout here in the third quarter. Timeout, UTSA. That is their first. It'll be 30 seconds in length. It's a drive where UTSA committed that defensive pass interference. We've seen WKU, a false start, followed by giving up a sack of their quarterback for the first time today. It's had its ups and downs, but the football still belongs to the visiting Hilltoppers as they have to be able to cut this back within one score. We mentioned they fell by one score in both of those games last year, including right here when it cost them a trophy. Yeah, and I'm not so sure if uh, if they could somehow get this first down here on fourth down, uh, we, we might end up in a one score game again. I, I think both these teams have the firepower. If they're within one or two scores, certainly until the end of this game, one of these teams got a shot to win. It's a big moment in the game here. It's kind of that no man's land. We saw in last possession as they tried to go for it on fourth down. Reed is looking, hoping he has a fan upstairs. To help him out on fourth and nine, start. and it's about to become fourth and 14, and that might change the game plan here. Yeah, left tackle. False start on the office number 76. Five yard penalty, fourth down. They're going to leave the offense out there. Wow. And UTSA was able to host the championship game last year. That may very well have decided the game. As this fantastic crowd, Tyson held a lot of respect yeah, for yeah. his adversaries today. And yeah, the crowd certainly playing a part in the game just like it did a year ago. The crowd making it tough for the signals that he's offensive line getting antsy. Will Reed have time? It's deflected, and it is a stop on fourth down for the Roadrunners. So after UTSA was forced to punt the football, it was a promising drive for WKU that, oddly enough, just about came to an end on a defensive pass interference a few plays ago. And his defense line doing a great, great job. That was actually Nick Booker Brown, number 41. He's one of these backup defensive linemen, a sophomore transfer. He's made some flashes in this game, and that right there was a huge play to tip the pass. Can this Hilltopper defense come through again and give their offense another chance? It was just a one yard gain on first down on the last drive for the Roadrunners on that Brendan Brady run. They go back to Brady. This is actually Trayvon Smith. A late flag comes in from the backfield and another flag. I think we're going to have offsetting penalties here. Likely a face mask at the end of the play. But was there holding against the Roadrunners before it ever got started? I think we got a lot of going on here. I think we got holding, and I think we've got face mass at the end of this play. It was a 13-yard run. There are fouls by both teams on the play. Holding on the offense, number 68. Personal foul, face mask on the defense, number two. Those fouls will offset. We'll replay first down. So it's always misleading when we say those fouls offset because you also just negated a 13-yard gain for the offense. Right. So that is a net victory for Western Kentucky as WKU will simply force UTSA to replay first and 10. You see the subtle nod to Hispanic Heritage Month on that orange trim on the helmets and on the Birdhead logo as well. Uh, running without the football, not sure there would have been much there had J.T. Clark been able to hang on. Second and ten. Well, that's a version of their RPO there. We, we've seen WKU do that a couple of times in the game. And you're right, there's not a whole lot there. He might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a couple of more yards. Traylon Smith will split out five receivers now for Harris. 
Has his eyes on the prize, goes back to Clark. Undeterred by the drop a moment ago, the man who caught three touchdowns last year against WKU has all the trust in the world from his quarterback. Uh, he, he's just too talented of receiver. You, you got to go back to him. And that's a well-designed play. Will Stein, passing game coordinator, offensive coordinator, dialing up a beautiful one there. Back to Clark. He'll be pushed down to the 26-yard line. A nine-yard gain will set up second and one. And boy, if you're an offensive coordinator with this offense, you've got to look forward to second and one. Yeah, you can spread the ball out. These receivers are so instinctive that they never take themselves out of the plate. Young receivers continue to run on their routes, but you see these veteran guys come back to the quarterback when he's scrambling in the pocket. Hilltoppers leading tackler Jaquez Evans had the stop there, pushing Clark out of bounds, a yard shy of the marker. Trey Smith regains his balance. Smith is down to the 16-yard line. Needed one, picked up 10. Yeah, that's a really nice run. It's a patient run. Look at the inside. He wants to go there, but sees something out to the right side, and then he just makes some guys miss. First down. Into the red zone. Smith with back-to-back -back carries. This time is swallowed up by the big man in front, and Oliver, to his credit, did not slam him down. Otherwise, you would have negated your own great play. Caleb Oliver with a nice adjustment, the former Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket. Tell you what, Caleb Oliver is, is a football player. You know, I love the versatility of Caleb Oliver. You can put him anywhere. You can put him at the line of scrimmage. He's a safety. He's got great range, 6'4", 215 pounds. So he's physical at the point of contact. So from the 15-yard line, second and 10 after no gain. Smith still your running back on this drive. And he'll just get whatever he can, inching them closer. I'll be interested if they see a fourth down coming up, if they think there's any value in a field goal as opposed to either scoring a touchdown or pinning WKU back this close to their own end zone. I think they're certainly more interested in going up three scores because a field goal only makes it still a two-score game. So you're a none-of-the-above kind of guy. <laughs> Harris, the throw back to his tight end. Open space along that sideline, a first down and out of bounds, a couple yards shy of perhaps going up that third score. Dan Dishman with his first catch of the day. Now, this is a kind of a throwback screen to the tight end, but watch the block outside on the perimeter. That's Makai Hart. That's a great job because it's so easy to get caught in that position and for a holding penalty, he let go at the right time, and that's a huge play. And they're actually going to mark him short now, Lincoln. On fourth down here. You're right. Well, this can be a glass half full or glass half empty kind of moment. And the defense of WKU is going to make sure that Roadrunner glass is completely dry. They get the stop on fourth down on the field, in convincing fashion. Short coming up in a big end. moment to get this ball back, swallowing up Trey Smith in the backfield. It'll be Hilltopper football down by still just 10. So Jeff Trailer will hope his defense can come through. Maybe get some penetration in the backfield. As Austin Reed stands two yards off his own goal line. Downfield has his man open and sitting down to make the catch. Again, Robichaud. That is the end of the third. As three quarters now in the books, WKU driving when quarter number four comes your way. A fresh 15 minutes on the clock for the fourth quarter. 
Each team had a drive and on a failed fourth down conversion. That keeps the Hilltoppers within two scores here. Still plenty of time for this offense led by Austin Reed. Line side pressure, got rid of the football in time. The catch made by Corley, a nine yard gain as Reed took his biggest pop of the day. Well, I, I want to tell you, man, he, he's got eyes at the back of his head. I mean, the anticipation, the last minute completion, that's outstanding. That was Nick Troy Fortune who got to him. And back to back completions to Corley will move the sticks. I mean, this guy is not afraid to put the ball in any spot. That's how much confidence he has. Watch this throw. You've got a, a defender, Taylor. He's underneath that, but he still threaded the needle and picks up another first down here. Arm talent of this young man is off the charts for sure. All right, it sounds absurd, but there are a lot of coaches we spoke to this week who are even higher on him than the guy whose shoes he's filling this year. Underneath, and he will let Matheson do the rest up across midfield to the UTSA 48-yard line. Yeah, that's that explosiveness. Here's the tunnel screen. He gets in behind the offensive line on the screen, and look at the speed. Not an Akron anymore, but still got that zip. And another first down strike <laughs> to Daywood Davis. That is incredible. That is incredible. The arm strength, he's falling back with the defender in his face, Lincoln, and puts that ball into money. And that's not a five-yard pass. That's 15 plus almost 20 yards or more downfield on the dime. His eyes have been trained downfield the entire time. This will be a gain of about eight to Corley. Well, now you're going to get in trouble. If you're the Roadrunners defense, you're not able to get pressure. You're trying to bring some blitzes to get him off his spot, but now he's extending plays with his legs and still keeping his eyes upfield. They'll say second and three. And they'll keep it on the ground with Robichaud. It's going to be third and two, just a yard gained. And a Roadrunner lineman is down. They've already had to cart off Time one on individual. Field for injury. Yeah, they started to get thin on that defensive front. We'll step aside as WKU marching, facing a third and two when you rejoin us. Fourth quarter underway at the Alamo Dome. Nick Booker Brown helped off with some aid from the trainers. The NC State transfer out of the ACC to Conference USA. It is third and two coming up for WKU here. Now the key to this drive has been number 16 right there in the middle of your screen, extending plays. Some phenomenal passes he's been able to make downfield. Not so sure if they may line up and try to run this one. Down by two scores. This drive continues. As Reed will take it into the red zone, finally swallowed up by Rashawn Wisdom. You know, he's built like a fullback, and he's got a an arm like Dan Marino. And anytime you've got a quarterback that has the physical tools that can run with a blocker in the backfield, you've got advantage against the defense. And right there, Lincoln, they easily pick up that third down. They can pick up one more first down as this snap from the 18-yard line. Has Robichaux, but wants more, has more. Touchdown, Hilltoppers. Michael Matheson. Oh, boy, they love this guy every day in practice running. He's incredible. For miles and miles. Well, he runs a beautiful route. First of all, the defensive back slips in the backfield, Corey Mayfield Jr., but Matheson's running what they call a banana route. He's going to circle across the middle of the field and then banana out to the sideline. 
It was a beautiful route combination. And when you've got a quarterback like they have that can see the field and get the ball out to the receiver on time, that's pretty tough to stop. Second touchdown on the year for the junior receiver, Matheson. As Braden Narvison still perfect on extra Tries points. Good. A three-point ball game. A little in excess of 12 minutes to go. UTSA and WKU, one of these two teams will move to 2-0 in Conference USA. So how will the Roadrunners now respond as Austin Reed's had that same expression on his face all day long. Yeah. He goes out there, picks up first downs and touchdowns. Very workmanlike. Hard to shake him. They've only been able to get to him twice, once for a sack, and the other time he got rid of the football in time. Yeah, it just seemed like he got better that drive. He, he started to say, hey, guys, we need to step it up. Get on my back. I'm going to take you downfield. We're going to get this touchdown. It really puts some heat back on this Roadrunners offense and cut this lead down to a one-score game, which we knew at some point in time it was going to eventually get there. And these two teams are going to have to duke it out for the last 12 and some change here. Corey Munson with the onside kick. Great play. Roadrunners did not let it go 10 yards. As the Roadrunners were ready. What do you think of that decision? Well, you got to figure out some way to get that extra possession. I think this is a good kick. And this is just well played. That's all that is. It's perfectly timed. That's what you see in the scouting report. And sometimes it will work out. It's Kyle Wakefield, one of the reserve linebackers, coming in. Yeah, Wakefield, the Lake Travis High School product from up in Austin, same high school as Baker Mayfield. Yeah, and, and when you do that, you know, Coach Helton rolling the dice and saying, I, I trust my defense. My defense has been the catalyst this season. We figured we could get another stop. That's the only reason why you pulled that there, too. This is the shortest field UTSA has faced today. As First snap will come on the Hilltopper 43-yard line. Harris finds Franklin. Zakari Franklin inside the 15, down to the 12. Yeah, they set that one up nice. How many times we see number four go across the middle of the defense on that little skinny slant, skinny post, I should say, off play action. From 12 yards out, Man coverage, and he'll take Clark every time. Roadrunners back on the board, a two-play drive. He's becoming one of the better receivers, not only at Conference USA, but in the country of those 50-50 balls in the end zone. He's a physical specimen to begin with, but if you could put it in the right spot and let him just big body the receiver, or the, the defensive back, you got to like your chances with J.T. Clark. Not much more Davion Williams could have done there in coverage, the former Michigan State man. These are NFL caliber receivers for UTSA, making NFL catches both feet in for Clark on that score. And Sackett tacks on another. Well, a costly gamble tries good. for WKU with the onside kick. And it costs them as the Roadrunners back up by two scores. Frank Harris just needed two passes on the two-play touchdown drive after the Roadrunners were set up in prime real estate after a failed onside kick by WKU after their touchdown. They quickly give the score right back as JT Clark able to get both feet down and on that great jump ball in the end zone. Yeah, Coach Helton's probably thinking, man, <laughs> second guessing myself, I, I probably should have kicked it deep and let my defense you know, defend a, a longer field, but really nothing you can do. I mean, that offense, when it executes the way they did just there on that position, there's not many defenses that's going to slow them down. You got receivers that match up well against anybody in the country, really. And when they can get an open field to make plays over the top with their big bodies in length, that's just tough to stop. Jared Sackett split the uprights, perfect on extra points, and we'll 
Send this one back into the end zone for the touchback. So out to the 25-yard line as WKU is back to where they were before the last drive, down by 10. Luckily, they still have that guy. Yeah, what a guy he is. I mean, he is everything that you could possibly uh, note at a quarterback. He is as advertised. And you know, the control that he has in the game, the way he is finding these receivers downfield now, it just makes this offense dangerous. Corley in motion, and Reed will look that way. Tries to drop it down and almost threw it right <laughs> to Chase Davis, the sophomore defensive lineman. <laughs> you talking about a, a big boy that probably would have celebrated after this one. Yeah, there it is. He is not on the kick return hands team. <laughs> no, he is not. But he's got some positives. No turnovers in this ball game. Roadrunners did fumble one into the end zone, but they fell on it for that Joshua Cephas score. As Reed will happily go to Jalen Hall for the first down, gain of 14. You know, Lincoln, it's, it's one thing to know where to go with the football, but it's the placement of the ball and tight coverage that gives his receivers to make a chance, make a play there. Jalen Hall replacing Mitchell Tinsley this year. Not really much of a drop off at that position. And it's another first down pitch and catch this time to Malachi Corley. Yeah, you can tack on a flag at the end of this one too. Corley who put on about 10 extra pounds this year, even harder to bring down. Yeah, he, he's got an attitude when he gets the ball that he is not going to be stopped. I mean, he is running over defensive backs. Personal foul targeting on a defense number six. That play is under review. It's Kalechi Wanchiku. They'll take a look at it. All targeting calls are immediately reviewed due to the severity of the penalty. Wachuku would be ejected from this game. Oh, absolutely not. We expect this to be overturned, but we'll take a break. Still haven't got the ruling that is about to come in after our replay official Brad Smith has relayed things to Patrick Foy, our referee. Neither of whom are pictured on your screen at the moment. After review, there is no targeting on the play. The result of the play is a first down for Western Kentucky. It'll be first and 10 for Western Kentucky. This was the play they called targeting on, and that's shoulder to shoulder. Uh, that's a great frankly, job. Frankly, it, it would have been shoulder to chest if the offensive player didn't lower his head. Yeah, that's a great job of the officials to get it right, uh, review the call. Still a great play by WKU for sure in Corley. So Wachuku can stay in this ball game and will not be suspended for the first half of next week's game. And a flag comes in before the snap. False start. Well, that's been an absolute killer. Ball start on the office number 75. Five-yard penalty. And that's the down. second time Mr. Britton has had a flag sent his way. So that pushes the Hilltoppers to their own half of the field. First and 15. Another batted down pass, an incomplete pass. And look who's back. Yeah, NBB, good to see him back into the game. And these defensive linemen are taught if you can get up field quickly, but you can't get to the quarterback, get that hand up. Nick Booker Brown 
in the Houston product, sophomore. Had to be helped off the field earlier in this ball game. Second and 15 for Austin Reed in this offense, down by two scores. And he just saw some potential looks at maybe a blitz coming for UTSA. That look will change now. Quick toss out the left side, and a couple moves too many. None of them involving going north. Dalvin Smith is stopped after the catch. And right there, that's that's typically that's the heart and soul of this defense. Is when zero on that defensive side, Rashad Wisdom. When he's right, when he's healthy, he's the undisputed leader on that defense coming up and making a huge play there. He's your preseason defensive player of the year in Conference USA. Frank Harris got the offensive nod in the preseason. Narvison for WKU got the special teams nod, understandably. A lot of headliners in this one, including Austin Reed. Third and 15. Out of the pocket. Drops it down. And it's going to be fourth and about six to go. If they do go for it on fourth down, Corley will not be a part of the play. I mean, what do you do? They bring everybody they possibly can bring. Man coverage on the back end. You got to like that matchup with Corley against Watsuku. You got to like that. They get enough to make this a decision to where they are going to go for it on fourth down. Both teams have struggled on fourth down as of late. Thanks to our producer for backing me up on that. Reed, short of the first down marker, but they will get it. And a battle on the sideline. A lot of fight there, and Joshua Simon, the tight end. Had a touchdown last week against Troy, his second score of the year. Well, this is a big grab from him, and the ability, if he stays in bounds there, that appears to be undisputed. Yeah, they're going to try to hurry up and snap this ball, but you got substitutions. It is a first down for WKU. Carry up the middle. Robichaux with the eyes on the end zone is in. 33-yard touchdown run by Kai Robichaux here in the fourth quarter to bring it back within one score. And watch the blocking up front. You've got guys just caving down. Quintavious Leslie, number 78, when he turned his shoulder, that's when Robichaux hit it. And right in the middle of the defense, it just opened up. And I'm telling you, give credit to this offensive staff to stick with the run. They didn't panic. They stayed with the game plan and hit one for a big one. Back within a field goal. WKU back in business on the road today in Conference USA. Show touchdown has WKU back within a field goal. Last time they scored a touchdown, they opted for an onside kick. Did not give Chris Carpenter a chance for a turn. Have a feeling that might change here. Yeah, you're going to let your defense have to defend, you know, 75 yards or more. There's a lot of confused fitness trackers on that sideline. <laughs> Out of the end zone. Carpenter looking to repeat the feat as he has the only kickoff return for a touchdown in this program's history. He'll bring the ball up close to the 30-yard line for UTSA. They'll say he stepped down at the 26. Nearly had a touchdown on a carry. Fumbled it at the one-yard line in the end zone. Joshua Cephas fell on it. What do the Roadrunners have in mind? Assume it is too early to be conservative. Nearly nine minutes still to go. A lot of time the way these two offenses operate. And yeah, the way they've been running the ball, that's what you do. That's what's got to carry you home. Low play action. Cephas will be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Tip of the cap to Rome Weber. The safety with the stop. And it's textbook to defense. He reads that all the way, and you can see what these offenses have done coming into tonight's game, and they're only going to add on to that as both offenses have played well. Underneath the Cephas, who is blanketed on the coverage that time by Halasi. 
Yeah, it's been some nice defensive back play. Watch Colossi here. The key thing, that offhand, it cannot be on the body of the defense or the receiver, and he knocks the pass down. What you don't want to do here, if you UTSA, you do not want to have a quick three and out here. Momentum certainly back on the Hilltopper side. Can the Hilltopper defense get off the field here? Frank Harris making sure they get this right. Need the 36-yard line. Harris poised, drops it in for the first down. Oh, Harris was flirting with that line of scrimmage, but finds Brendan Brady. These quarterbacks have been off the charts. Watch the improvisation here. Keeps his eyes upfield, flips it to Brendan Brady, and they keep the chains moving. And what can a defense do? They show blitz, they back out, they only rush three, trying to play coverage, and lose track of the running back in the flat. So this will keep the Hilltopper defense out there a little longer. Brady. And just a modest nine-yard gain before the football comes out. And at the moment, on top of that ball is Derek Smith. Yeah, let's watch the end of this. You get into traffic, you got to put two hands on it. Right there, rip, strip and rip. The ruling on the field is the ball was fumbled and recovered by the defense. That's exactly what it was. Kentucky. Aaron Key, Aaron Key making a, a huge play in the first half. Now he comes up with the tackle strip there. Yeah, the freshman key this year, already two fumble recoveries. Has a touchdown this year on defense off of a turnover that time. Rips one loose for his teammate to fall on. And it did not look like Brendan Brady was down. So there's your first the turnover in the ballgame. Is under review. Yeah. And they are going to look at whether or not Brendan Brady perhaps already had a knee down. Yeah, I don't think it's any question about it. I, I think it's a, it's a clear strip of the football. You know, the Hilltoppers offense licking their chops. And this defense of UTSA just got gashed last possession. Of course, they ruled it both a fumble and a recovery for WKU. Both would be reviewable. It looked clearly like Derek Smith did, in fact, come up with that football. Boy, was his head coach singing his praises on our call this week. It is Brady's right hip. Yeah, that ball looks loose. Yeah. Can't imagine there's enough there to overturn it. What a play by Aaron Key. I mean, you know, in the heat of the battle, you know, to think like that and then go execute that and knock it out is, is phenomenal. Great coaching. Patrick Foy has more microphones than you and me combined. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? You know, I, I, I get the little tan one. If I get the one closest to his mouth. What's that? I guess that's a headset to the replay booth there, right? But what's that one in the middle then? I mean, three mics? We'll just have to speculate. We anticipate this call will be confirmed. At the very least, even if it stands, it's WKU football. After review, the play stands as called. It is a fumble. It will be first and 10 for Western Kentucky. So they could not decisively say that Brady wasn't down, but they stayed with the call on the field. Is this the break that the Hilltoppers need after their score on the last drive? You see the numbers right there with the season averages. Yeah. He's a real deal. This drive can give them their second lead of the day. Well, sudden exchanges like that. Offenses like to go up top and go for the jugular if you can. Swings it out. Gain of about four. Adrian Taylor with the tackle after the catch hauled in by Jalen Hall. Adrian Taylor, who can just basically play any role you want on defense. Reed able to sell the handoff and may regret that decision after Robinson gives him a lick. Ken Robinson, the safety, coming up to make the stop. Yeah, he kind of got himself in no man's land there, Austin Reed. Third and four. Yeah. 
And that, uh, that's a big play by Ken Robinson, at least give his defense a chance here. Love that reflection in the helmets, giving you a little added look. That's of pretty neat. Everything around the quarterback. Corley in motion to the slot. On third and four, the extra effort will be enough to keep this drive moving. Jalen Hall would not be denied. Ali, just the football smarts of these receivers. I mean, it is incredible just to recognize and realize what they need to go to get the yard to make. If this was flag football, he'd be down. Back to Hall. Stepped out of bounds for a loss of maybe three. See what this offense is trying to do. They're just trying to make this defense run and have to tackle in space. And you figure the Hilltoppers like their chances. If you get the ball to either number 11 or four, now we've seen Jalen Halt come up zero, and we know David Davis is the deeper threat. But man, these guys underneath, Corley and Matheson, man, they are very difficult to get down to the ground. Trailing by a field goal, facing second and 13. At midfield. And Reed will get all but two of the yards. It's going to be third and two coming up. And that is not a promising look there on the sideline. Yeah, he took a shot. Yeah, he took. It'll be third and two coming up for the Hilltoppers. Time out on the field for injury. But they are not going to be able to continue play with a player down there on the sideline. Yeah, that's just it's Dave Wood Davis. And, and he takes a real, real tough shot there. And this may be a little while. Yeah, and I, I think Coach Helton is upset because it looked like a shot right to his helmet. Five forty-eight to go here in the fourth quarter. No surprise for a third meeting in 12 months. These two teams separated by less than a score. Yeah, that just yeah that's a shoulder. Yeah, it did. went to helmet to helmet, so it's definitely not a e illegal hit. It's just, you know, blunt force. Yeah, misfortune there for Davis, who has a touchdown early in this ball game. Well, you're talking about a main piece in that offense. These four receivers, you know, you could put them up with, with anybody. And that's a good sign to say, see Dave Wood up. You know, I, uh, I played football a long time ago, Lincoln. This, this site here was received differently, you know, back, you know, back when I played. And, and nowadays, this is, this is a whole different ball game. You got to take this to the next level of precautions and be safety-wise and Glad to see him up walking. Yeah, they're going to take him over to the tent that they've just erected. Of course, Davis Sr. It was Austin Reed who took a pretty good lick a couple of plays earlier, but has his man a yard shy of the next first down in Roadrunner territory. Can Austin Reed do what Bailey Zappi couldn't, and that's hanging L on UTSA. First down. He's such a good runner with the football. Even with the call quarterback runs, he, he runs it perfectly. I mean, he allows his lineman to set the block and get up the field and running back get up. And, man, they pick up yards easily. They'll hand it off this time. And right into those big bodies. Remember, the Roadrunners fumbled the football. That set up this drive for WKU. This defense is trying to get that football back. Ligon among those who would love to be a part of ending this promising drive for WKU. See the indication substitutions were made by WKU, so UTSA has time to make subs as well. Plenty of time on the play clock, though, here for Austin Reed.
Reed goes to Matheson, and he's laid out by Rashawn Wisdom. And that's a real good tackle because that's one offensive player, Matheson. You don't want to give him a chance to get back upfield. And that's Rashawn Wisdom. That's what he brings to the defense. No doubt about getting him down there. Got to be careful after those big hits to Taunt. remind yourself just walk away. Yeah, we walk away. I know. I know this is a highly contested game. Emotions are high. Got to play smart. Well, remember, a field goal could tie it. Right now, they're looking for a first down here. Reed gets rid of it quickly, perhaps too quickly. He was looking for Hall. It is short. And the Hilltoppers have a offensive lineman Time down the before they injury. have to make this decision of whether to try to kick a game-tying field goal or go for it here on the road. Yeah, it's a left tackle there. Yeah, it's Mark Good, the 300-pound sophomore. Yeah, it's one of the rare times that this Roadrunners defense brings the blitz, and they almost get home, but it was, it was effective enough to make Austin Reed Oh, that pass off the mark. We've had one turnover in this ball game. Is UTSA on their last drive? WKU is trying to turn that into points here, but they have a fourth and a long six to go. You can already see they're warming up for a field goal on that far sideline, if necessary. Yeah, I think if you feel comfortable with your kicker's leg in this type of environment, in a dome, in a dome, air yeah. conditioning is turned to low. This would be a 51-yard field goal. Yeah, it is chilly up here in this booth. I know that. But, yeah, you're on the right hash, you know, a right-footed kicker. Got to like your odds there. I, I just don't like the, the idea of trying to go forward here where you, you, you don't have to. It's not, you know, game dire just yet. And then you don't get it, and giving the ball back to UTSA, they could potentially run the clock out at that moment in time. You just never know. Braden Narvison's long last year was 53 yards. His longest so far this year, 47. But we mentioned all the elements are in place here inside the dome on turf. As you see the cart coming out tonight for a second time, first time for WKU now. As we've needed help getting some big men yeah. to the treatment they need. You know, I, I thought Mark Good w was going to be okay. He, he actually hobbled off. And I thought maybe he was just going to kind of maybe hop to the side and maybe go off. But, man, he, he looks like he's uh, having to get helped up here for sure. Problem was, while he was hobbling off, he was coming to the wrong sideline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good to see the uh, UTSA training staff there to assist as well. Yeah, they just care about the wellness of all these student athletes, regardless of what colors they're wearing. All these linemen these days, of course, proactively wear those braces on both knees. So you hope that minimizes the amount of unnatural movement in any kind of joints and ligaments. And I certainly wish the best for Mark. And this is where we redirect it to the game at hand, where it is fourth down and a long six. From the 34-yard line, it would be a 51-yard field goal. Right now, it's the offense set to go out there, led by Austin Reed. At the very least, could they get UTSA to jump, maybe give them an extra five yards for a field goal? Now the chess match begins. Defensively, are you continuing to bring pressure? Hope you get there, force an errant throw. 22,000 fans who have stuck around for the finish of this one. Austin Reed looking to buy time, throws a jump ball, it's broken up. UTSA again has held on fourth down. Yeah, here it is again. You're going to look from the end zone. You can see what the quarterback is seeing. Now he's just throwing it up, hope he can get, somebody can make a play or pass interference. And Rashad Wisdom there to make the play, Lincoln. Second time that a roadrunner accidentally intercepted a fourth down pass. You wouldn't blame him there since he was in traffic. And now you wonder, would you have rather tried a 51-yard field goal? Yeah, I, I, I think you, you, you try. Because, again, if you miss, ball's still going to be where it is. 
at least you get a chance to, to tie it up. But here, man, this is a chance for UTSA and their four-minute offense or three-and-change offense to salt this thing away. All right, Trey Smith is your running back, the senior, after Brady fumbled on his last carry. Trey Smith, wide open spaces. They'll force him out of bounds at about the 47-yard line, a gain of 13. That's a nice run. You, you, you'd ideally like for him to kind of stay in bounds, keep that clock running. Yeah, it's going to sure. run regardless with the rule change a few years ago. I must didn't get that memo. Yeah, Roadrunners with a lead here <laughs> late in the fourth quarter. Had it been the Hilltoppers, clock would have stopped. And there it is. That's that's always been the difference in these matchups. They've been able to run the ball effectively. You see there, 208 yards rushing for the Roadrunners. Back to Smith looking for daylight. There is none. Three Hilltoppers are there to make the stop, including Khalif Halasi. Yeah, no hurry here. You just want to get up. You might want to snap this play on the play call on the on a, you know, again, when it gets about five seconds left on the play clock. They do just cross midfield on a two-yard gain. Best part of that run was you protected the football, and that clock does continue to turn yeah. down. Both of these teams burned a timeout back in the third quarter. We'll see how that affects the way this game plays out. Six seconds on the play clock. Got to get it off here. Harris gets it in time. And again, nowhere to go. As Darius Ship, the 305 defensive tackle, timeout did not allow Western Brady. Kentucky. That is their second. It'll be 30 to pick seconds. Pick up any yardage, but WKU does have to burn now. It's second timeout, just north of two minutes to go. Well, we thought there was a chance this would be our halftime score. Yeah, we, we, di we did. And how about the defense is showing up today? And rightfully so. Even though the offenses have both gone over 460, 470 yards respectively now, and it's just tough in today's game to slow any of these offenses down. But now you've got two of the top five offenses in the country, and they're showing you why in this game for sure. Third and eight for Frank Harris, fourth all-time meeting between these two programs. Last year they met twice. 52-46 and 49-41, both going the way of the Roadrunners. Harris will call his own number. He needs the 42-yard line. Frank Harris is going to be stopped two yards short. It'll be fourth and two. And because it's a field goal ball game, you would think the Roadrunners would be less likely to go for it, but Jeff Trailer is a better coach than I am. Yeah, and, and this is a good decision by Frank Harris. Knowing the situation in the game, you don't want to put that ball up and it gets tipped, knocked down, stops the clock. So if you can run, get out of bounds. Yeah, I think that's the right thing to do to punt the ball. Yeah, it's two yards. Roadrunners have been capable tonight often of getting that two yards. They did fail on a Time fourth out. and one earlier. UTSA, that is their second. And for WKU. If you give them the ball right here on a turnover on downs, they're just a couple first downs away from being within field goal range yeah, again. That's exactly right. That's the strategy there. I'm going to push them back. You've got a veteran punter. He's been punting well in this game when you when you've needed him. Yeah, make them offensively have to go the length of the field if you can. If you're going to vote for your punter to have a single digit, Lucas yeah. Dean, number five. Right. You trust him in this situation. College football in the city of San Antonio has been quite a marriage for a little over a decade now. It's a beautiful thing. You can feel the energy for sure. Roadrunners are not going to punt it. At least they bring their offense out for now. On fourth and two, WKU stuffed them earlier this quarter. Harris gets rid of it. The reach from Cephas, uh -huh. it's going to be close. <laughs> Where was his knee? Where was the football at the moment? That's a first down. <laughs> Ruling on the field is oh a first down. Oh, my gosh. 
What a play by Joshua Cephas. What a play. Look at the effort here. He stopped. No, he's not. And he stretched out. And yes, by the nose of the, the ruling football. Ruling on the field is the first down. That play is under review. Yeah. We, we're not even talking about Frank Harris because he's got a guy in his face to get the pass off. It's a good defensive play, first and foremost, by Stout. But the second effort by Cephas may very well have won this game. Kept those knees off the ground, full extension. Unbelievably able to twist and turn. Joshua Cephas, who is Johnny on the spot for that fumble in the end zone for UTSA earlier in this ball game. I'm not sure which play is bigger. Yeah, I know. I mean, that is incredible. I, I'm sitting there thinking, okay, Western Kentucky about to get the ball back and, and then this game on. But man, at the last moment, here it is again. This is under review. And good luck overturning the spot of this football. Yeah. He is down there. Football's down about the same time. And there's nothing Upton Stout could have done any better. I, I think he does a phenomenal job. Oh, absolutely. At the point of contact, Lincoln. He, he gets where he needs to be, but then you just got just a freak of nature athlete in Joshua Cephas to keep the thing alive, contort his body one way. Hit the first down. Again, just needs the 42-yard line there. Knee is down there. Ball is across. The nose of the ball is all you need yeah. is across that hash mark. And how about the official? Right on top of it, looking, making sure. He never took his eye off the spot. <laughs> he gets the spot right. That's. You've always loved officials. Yeah, you know, I, I give them a little love. At the moment. Roadrunners appear to make the right decision by going for it on fourth down. WKU just has one timeout left with a minute 50 to go in a three-point affair here in San Antonio. Now the play again is still under review. Our replay official, Brad Smith, and the ruling is in. After review, the call on the field stands. It'll be first down for UTSA. Yeah. Whatever the ruling was initially probably was going to remain the status quo. You see the numbers for Joshua. Hey, he's a complete receiver, and you can say that about all these guys. You know, Zakari Franklin, you know, he predominantly gets all the headlines. He's typically the one, JT Clark. But Joshua Cephas, man, he's kind of the combo of all of them because he can play inside, he can play Time outside, out. and that play Western there Kentucky, that is their final. signifies his ability. That clock was going to start running, so WKU has just burned its final timeout. If they are going to come back, first they'll need a stop, and then they will need a score with no timeouts Game to work with. Operator. Can They're going to likely put, put a couple seconds back on this clock one, here in the fourth five, quarter. Zero. Thank you. Well, what a job Tyson Helton has done in his four years at WKU. Three bowl appearances, two bowl victories. That's still the remaining first for UTSA, presumably, is that first bowl win last year's brilliant season. But ultimately unsuccessful on the final day yeah. up in Frisco. Yeah, that was a good game, too. Well. WKU had that victory over App State over in Boca Raton. Victory formation for the UTSA Roadrunners looking to improve to 2 0. And with a 40 second play clock, let's see how close they can get this one down to zero. Well, what a game. I mean, this is a they should <laughs> this is a hard fought game here, man. Yeah, they should be able to run this completely out. Yeah, you just hate the way for the Hilltoppers, the way they battled. Yeah, you know, they overcame some adversity in this game, and it seemingly looked like they were on the precipice of tying this thing up and potentially getting a stop there on fourth down. It may be going down and winning the game, and just like that, you got great players making plays, Lincoln. 
And this is a, a character win for these Roadrunners, for sure about that. It's going to be about 23 seconds on the clock when they have to snap this again. And that will be ball game. Roadrunners will improve to 2-0. and oh. And WKU is going to have to ask, what will it take to win one of these one-score ball games against that team from San Antonio? Yeah, that's that's the that's the question. You know, they've got fantastic athletes. This offense, no matter what, they may look down at times, but they will find a way, and they found a way to win this one tonight. Look, these two teams could meet again, and yeah. we would all be better for it. But it's the Roadrunners who again find a way to lose the turnover battle, but win the ball game. Just enough goes the way for the squad for the 2-0. Good shot of there, Frank Harris, Juwan Jones, mutual respect. These two teams, I tell you what, they get after one another, but their respect is certainly there. And you see the two coaches talking at midfield. This is the type of game that you hate for either one of these to have to lose for sure. And make no mistake about it, even with the loss tonight, the Hilltoppers will definitely have something to say about it when it's all said and done. So for LaDarren McLean and our entire crew, the Roadrunners claim the victory 31 to 28 in their return to the Alamo Dome here in Conference USA play. More importantly, they are 2-0 defending their titles from a year ago. A reminder, all games airing on ESPN Networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.